Can you hear anything now? I'm saying yes, okay. Um, right, let's just push a few more buttons and then fingers crossed we can start. Oh, I've got that going already. Um, yeah, so if you can hear me, let me know because again, I don't know, I always change things and recently I've moved. Um, and obviously in the move, I disconnect everything and then I have to reconnect everything. And whenever I reconnect things, sometimes I forget things or leave things off. But I can hear myself in my ear, so I'm sure you can hear me. Um, right, the other thing I need to do is, unfortunately, I've got it set up so my screens are right to the side of me. Which means if I look at the camera, I can't see what you guys are saying. But I have got a little Kindle behind you. And I'm hoping it's... Oh, there you go. Right, let's turn myself off, so to speak. Because I can hear myself, which is so annoying. Right, click that button. Oh, you know what, that one on the sound. Yeah, once I get these things all set up, then next time it will just be a case of I just got to push a few buttons. Which obviously makes things a whole lot easier. Right, so... Oh, I have to get the... Right, so it's, it's, bear with me. I can now get the chat up, but the chat is like so small I can barely read it. Let's see, how do I... I think I can pop it out. Uh, no, maybe not. If I turn the screen that way. No. Uh, what I'm going to have to do, guys, every now and then, I'm going to have to look... <laughs> Look to my right, just to see what you guys are saying. Because um, I am going to get another little screen or get something sorted so that obviously I can look at you. <laughs> obviously you're not really there because all I can see is a little uh, camera. Um, but obviously I'll be able to read what your comments are without having to sort of look to the side. And obviously I've lost the comments. There we go. Cool. Right, yeah, so it's been, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done one of these. And I know, was it a few weeks ago, I think I did one, and I did say I was going to get back into doing loads, or doing them quite regular, or regular-ish for me. Uh, but I am now. Um, I say, everything's now set up, sorted, apart from the fact I can't read your comments without looking over here. Um, but that's fine. We can do with that to today. And then later on, I'm going to get some sort of screen behind the mic, um, the webcam, just so I can sort of look at you and read comments. So, yeah, so obviously today, well, obviously not today because it's going to take me a while to build this thing. Um, I am going to be building this little fella. So it's the Thunderhawk. Um, there's been quite a few variations. There's at least, I think, three or four out there. Uh, but I'm going to do the original one from 97, obviously the metal one. And this one is the actual one that um, Squidmar um, did. I think he did it about a year or so ago. So I'm a bit late, <clears throat> a bit late to the, uh, the scene with this. Um, but yeah, obviously a metal one, nice and chunky, um, and obviously I'm going to build it um, just only using sprues, which will be quite cool. So um, yeah, I've had a few people message me about sprues, because obviously I haven't got many. Um, in fact, when I say I haven't got many, this is how many I've got. Um, obviously I've taken all the innards out, and they're currently in jars, turning into sprue goo. Um, but obviously today's video, I'm going to make the frame. So I'll be using these. So yeah, guys, if you've got sprues that you don't mind sending me, um, obviously I wouldn't be able to pay for, for postage. I think you'd be down at yourself to, to obviously send them and pay for the postage. Um, yeah, I would appreciate them. Um, certainly use them. And you'd get a shout out in the video where I obviously use sprues. So yeah, I've had a few people message me and are going to send me some. Um, I think they're coming from America, so they'll be here a little while to get to me. So yeah, if you're in the UK and you've got some, you want to send, <clears throat> send them to me, that would be awesome. Um, right, let's have a little shout out, see who's actually in the comments today, because I haven't done these live streams for ages, so, and obviously I'm never too sure who's on at what sort of times. Um, so let's have a quick look. So we got, my voice is going already. <clears throat> obviously I haven't, I haven't been talking all day today, and then now I'm talking and it's going a bit bizarre. So we've got uh, Sir Jeffington uh, for the Emperor. Uh, is it Piper Atomis? Again, if I pronounce or mispronounce names, I apologise that I am just crap at saying people's names. Uh, Andre here, that's good to see you buddy. Uh, Paul's here. Um, Ken L's here. Uh, who else? Anyone else? I've missed out. Uh, 
that major major chronic uh Celtic neutral cow hello eric uh and matthew crossfate from quebec canada cool yeah so quite a few people which is awesome um it's always nice to know i'm not here on my own although obviously i am here on my own because no one else is here um so yeah if you haven't seen any of my sprue videos i haven't done any for a while uh mainly because i kind of i did so many i was getting a bit sick and tired of them <laughs> but i mean that in the nicest of ways because the things with making things out of sprues there it takes a lot longer than to build with anything else <clears throat> and the main reason is because obviously i use or use a lot of good old sprue goo um so when you use this stuff obviously it's a case of chopping down your uh, your sprues chop all the nibbly knobbly bits off stick them in a jar put some acetone in there leave it for a good eight hours it dissolves and then you get yourself some sprue goo and this is obviously the stuff i use quite a lot in my builds so obviously there's it's kind of like a time delay when you're building something you have to allow the time it takes things to turn into sprue goo uh, but not only that when you use the sprue goo you've got to wait a good seven eight hours or more for it to then return back to being a hard plastic so yeah it can take quite a while to build anything because there's a lot of gaps in between uh, which is why I'm doing these now because I've got lots of other projects I'm doing so it doesn't matter if these take a long time so I'm kind of looking or thinking about doing one sprue build a month uh, just because it'll be it'll be done in between all my other videos basically um, so yes yeah, so that's why I don't mind doing a sprue, sprue videos again because I don't mind the waiting whereas before I was doing so many of these and it took so long sometimes uh, but I got a little bit like oh but no but obviously I've had a big break from this uh, the last thing I made the last big thing I made was the Tower Manta um, so if you haven't seen that go check that out obviously uh, quite a large build and that did use up uh, well pretty much most of the sprues that I kind of had left so that's kind of why well that's kind of why I need sprues um, just because I <laughs> say this this is all I've got um, also yeah if anyone was sort of noticing obviously the sprue goo now this we can move this camera up and down a bit um, the sprue goo or the acetone that's in here has gone almost black and that's because there's a variety of sprues as in colors obviously the red green and the gray if it was mostly gray sprues in here the acetone it wouldn't be clear but it'd be a lot lighter than it is it's because of the red and the green that it's gone very dark this was only done a couple of days ago uh, but i'll be using that for panels if you haven't seen any in my vi vi um, past videos you'll soon see how i make panels out of sprue goo and out of these and the first thing i normally do is i make a frame um, i love making frames because obviously then you've got something to put the panels on and it gives it its strength and again if you saw the, the town manta that i made um i think i made it was it back in january or maybe even december of last year obviously i made it full size and it was big i mean it wouldn't fit on my desk it was that big and i made that super strong it had a big box in the center of it and it was yeah it was it was massive it weighed a lot and yeah it wouldn't fit on the desk which is why i'm building something this time that's a bit more manageable um lots of problems trying to find the size of this uh yeah trying to find technical details and sizes was a nightmare uh, the only size i did see somewhere and it said it was 44 centimeters which is obviously it's actually bigger than what i've, I've got here uh, by quite a bit uh, about another but I'm three four inches bigger than this but it just looked too big um say so, because i looked because this is the um the squid mars one um i watched all of his videos in the last few days <clears throat> just to try and gauge how big it was in relationship to him like when he was holding it or painting it um so basically this is eyeballed so if anyone doesn't know the correct dimensions if you can quickly tell me right now awesome if not keep it to yourself because once i start building this i'm not gonna not gonna change it um, but yeah so this was printed out eyeballed from how it looked uh, size wise to uh, Squidmar when he was holding it painting it like his elbow was beside it or his hand was beside it <clears throat> so this is near enough if not spot on um, but yeah so I'm gonna be able to frame for this and if you've ever seen any of my past um, live streams you'll know that I don't normally get a lot done in these <laughs> normally because I start waffling and talking uh, I'm just going off at random, random tangents. Um, 
Sapien Underground greets from Oz. Oh wow, cool. What sort of time is it there? Well, it's morning, isn't it? I guess in, uh, in good old Oz. Um, Piper, I got sprue sick. I, I kind of did. I think I, I overdosed on sprues because I was making too many things with them. And rather than it being fun, it almost got to being a chore where I, I just wasn't enjoying uh, building because I felt like I, I had to build with them. Uh, and yeah, it got too much. And then obviously I had a bit of a break and obviously I've gone to D&D stuff, uh, which I am still doing obviously D&D stuff because I've got loads of it. And I'm just, well, again, this month or every month, I've got quite a lot of builds that I'm doing. D&D &D and that, that sort of stuff and that's why doing a sprue build in between kind of works out really well really um, so yeah so there's me waffling on anyway um, so yeah I just can't sprue it anymore yeah sprue it uh, yeah yeah because obviously and again my <laughs> still my favorite thing and I get it out every time who are madam um, and that's this my sprue burger uh, this is my <laughs> <laughs> it's so random. I mean, this channel is all about miniature stuff. Uh, obviously, a lot of Warhammer, a lot of D&D. So this doesn't really fall into any categories at all. Pretty random. But this is my favourite thing that I've built um, in the last couple of years. And it's a sprue burger. Let's uh, move the camera up a bit more. So, yeah, so this thing is um, uh, hollow. So, again, there's a, a framework inside this. And then this is all sprue. Everything on it is sprue. Frame sprue, everything sprue. Um, and yeah, this is still my favourite thing <laughs> that I've made out of sprues. Uh, and I keep saying it, I am going to make the fries to go with this as well as a milkshake. Um, but yeah, that's, that's on a, a back burner. I say, because at the moment I, I don't have enough sprues to build much with. So uh, we shall go. We shall see. Uh, Simulating gaming, how from the UK? Uh, if you're not enjoying it, don't do it. That's, yeah, it's exactly it. That's why, yeah, this channel, as much as obviously I want to earn money from it and make this my sort of job, so to speak, I, I do want to build things that I want to build that I enjoy because um, otherwise it will turn into a job, which I never want this to be a job. I want this to be a hobby and to be fun. So, um, yeah, that's why I, I, I kind of pretty much build what I want to build or make what I want to make, which is really good. Uh, howdy from Brazil. Hi there, Raphael. Um, is that Sebil Chura? Mm, so apologies if I got that wrong from France. So the other problem I've got is obviously wearing the glasses. These I've had these glasses about six years, and I really need to get new ones. The strength on these isn't very good. Um, uh, chaotic. Forgot how to fix the sprue. But yeah, sprue burgers are nice, chunky thing. Uh, would a sprue dragon be doable? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because obviously the one thing good with the sprues is it does leave a good texture. It's like if you saw my recent video on the tiles that I made. Uh, and these were all made from one mould, which uh, is somewhere over there. But because of the sprues, um, or the, the sprue goo, when the, uh, the acetone evaporates, obviously it leaves little sort of marks and little pocket holes and, and little divots. And the great thing is I've got one mould, but I can print out loads of these, or make loads of these, and they'd all be a little bit different just because of how well how they sort of dry basically so yes these are obviously magnets which is really good uh, i've only made four but i probably will make look more of these and i'm going to make some sides eventually but hey we digress as usual um <laughs> i say i always think i'm going to get loads done and then i kind of don't because i just waffle about other stuff so yes yeah, so throughout this as well i will be filming which is why obviously i've got my other webcam in front of me which is obviously what you guys are seeing as well um, but I've got it set up so I can film through it which is pretty cool so today that's why I have pretty much got most things set up now apart from having a screen beside the webcam so I can read your comments which I sh I'm gonna get that sorted uh, but other than that um, yeah I should be able to do lots of streaming um, mainly because I'm sitting at my desk quite a lot during the day so it makes sense to just do a live stream so you guys can get to see how long it actually takes because a lot of things I do obviously you see like an eight minute video or a 14 minute video but that's probably taken me two three days to do and um, there's normally about a good half a day of editing Ed the editing can take sometimes longer than it should um, but yeah so I'm gonna do more live streams just so you guys can sort of come along and uh, and have a look at what I'm, I'm doing um, yes yeah, so we've got a pizza loving gal 
Uh, yeah, who doesn't like a pizza, eh? They're, they're great. I love pizzas. Um, really fancy a pizza this weekend, actually. Might do that. But uh, yeah, good to have you here. Um, yeah. So let's have a go at doing, <laughs> doing a little bit. So yeah, I'm going to film. Um, I'll say what all I've filmed so far is cutting out the centre of these bits, and making some sprue goo. Um, obviously, this drawing I printed out. Then I drew this line around it because basically this line is going to show part of the framework I'm going to build. Again, trying to find dimensions of this was a nightmare. But all I know is the top bit is about <laughs> is about that wide. <laughs> Only from how old, um, what's his face, when he was holding it, his, his hand went like that far. So that's how, that's how I'm gauging it. So this really is winging it. Um, but it's going to be near enough. So we'll see. Right, so the other thing I was going to film, and that is me basically cutting off nibbly knobbly bits. I haven't said that for a while. So yeah, cut off the nibbly knobbly bits, cutting the lengths, um, taking everything off so these are nice and uh, long. So that's the reason why I love sprues. They're great for making frames. Um, so obviously I use the frames as they are to make, sorry, the sprues as they are to make the frames. And then the sprue goo makes the panels and all the other bits. And also things like the um, this sort of crest. I'm going to make that out of plasticine, then make a mould for it, and then cast that mould with sprue goo. So this ship is all going to be sprue, uh, but some parts of it I'm going to actually make moulds for, uh, which would be, well, pretty cool and and fun so yeah um the streams are really fun they are but i don't get much done it's, it's so bizarre it's like I, I was saying to a friend earlier um, a really good friend of mine that when i do these streams i talk lots but if you met me in real life or know me in real life i'm quite a quiet guy but for some reason when i'm sitting here on my own i just start waffling something wrong so yeah, I need to remember to film as well, because that's the thing I sometimes forget, is um, the filming. So the bit I want to film is literally me cutting off nibbly knobbly bits, and then when I come to edit the video, I, basically I film everything first, I edit it all together, speed bits up, just because obviously it makes, so you can see more of the process without it being so long, and then I do the voiceover afterwards. So quite often when I'm filming a bit, I'm filming it for a specific reason, and so this bit is literally me going to be, when I come to edit it, is me saying I'm cutting off the nibbly knobbly bits just to make um, all these lengths nice and smooth without bits on them just so I can then glue them all together um, and make a nice frame basically right yeah uh, again, again apologies if I say your name wrong because I, I I'm not I'm not really good at saying names in fact I can't see it Char Charmaru uh, you won one of the dice trays earlier. Awesome. Yeah, guys, the, uh, if you did enter that Easy Roller Dice competition, um, I was, got an email this morning saying the winners have been picked, so you should be notified. And obviously there's one of them, which is awesome. But they're also going to give me a discount code for 50% off. Um, oh, I haven't got my dice tray here. Uh, yeah, but if you look back on my videos, I've got a dice tray. Um, I don't know, is it a 12-inch dice tray? Quite a large one. You are, madam. Um, so yeah, there's a nice big dice tray with my logo, and I love nibbly knobbly bits in it. Um, I can't remember how much it costs, but it didn't. It don't, they don't cost that much anyway. But yeah, you can get 50% off, uh, which is really good. Um, I have a cross pattern on the camera. Yes, I do. That just helps me line things up, make sure that this isn't sort of like <laughs> on the piss. Um, so yeah, I can, I can take them off, but obviously I've got them on just because I like things to be neat and, and organised and all the uh, all the rest of it. So um, yeah, right. I'm going to film a little bit, so I need to click a button. Let's have a little drink. Right, there we go. So I'm now filming. Basically, what you can see on your screen is what I'm filming. So I'm just going to hold it up to the camera. And then we will take my little snips and cut these bits off. And say, so when I come to edit this, this is when I'll be saying on the video, and this is where we cut the nibbly knobbly bits off. And 
I say the reason for this is just so we've got some nice long lengths, uh, which obviously just makes it nice for when we make the frame, that it is all kind of like smooth, so especially when we're going to make the frame, and then we are going to add um, the sprue panels over the top. So you kind of want everything to be flush, um, just so it all fits together nicely, really. And obviously all these bits that we cut off, uh, all the nibbly knobbly bits, they all get put in the jar um, that then gets turned into the ooey gooey spruey stuff. So nothing is uh, is wasted. So it all gets used. So we'll just try and make these things as smooth as. So obviously when I come to do the video, I don't video me doing all of these sprues. Obviously there's no need, I just need to do one on for the video. Um, and then move on to obviously the next bit. So we can stop that. So, so that's why obviously with the live streams you're going to get to see obviously every process. Um, and then you'll appreciate that it can take quite a while. It's like they say that town manta. Um, I can't even remember how long that actually took me. Although if you watch the um, the live streams, I think I pretty much only built it on the live streams. Uh, even though the end video might only have been, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes? I'm not even sure how long it was. But uh, yes, yeah, so I hope you guys are all good. Um, CMN Gaming is going to try this out. Yeah, I, I would say this is quite a, it's not a simple build, but it's certainly not a hard build. Um, obviously the hardest bit is going to be like, all these little intricate detail uh, bits like on the engine. Uh, but say quite a lot of the, these bits I'm going to make out of plasticine, make a mould and then cast the mould with sprue goo. Um, and like some of the guns and bits. So yeah the basic bog shape of this is well, it's like a box. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, pizza loving girl. Um, yeah hope you're having fun. Um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying toys and stuff and all that kind of thing. Uh, Safe in Underground is tears. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, obviously, sometimes I do miss comments as well, guys. So apologies if you if you want to send me a message or you're asking me a question. If you can put at Miniature Hobbyist um, in your comment, just because then on my screen it highlights part of it in yellow. And then I know you're obviously asking me a question and not just sort of adding chit chat. Uh, which is obviously great, you guys chit chat, um, but say I, I do sometimes forget to look at the screen, especially when it's over there. Because when I used to do these, these setups, I used to have the webcam right beside where the screen was, um, just so I could see the comments really easy. But obviously, say because of how my desk set up, my screens are all the way over this side. But I will get so I've got the little Kindle there, but I can't seem to make the uh, the chat box bigger. Which a bit of a shame because if I could I'd be able to see it um, yeah I don't know I don't know how I can just get the chat I need to I need to look into that basically that was my plan was to have my Kindle there purely with the chat box uh, just so again I can see the chat nice and easy uh, but at the moment uh, I can't um, Maybe I should do the Titan. Yeah, see, the thing that, I love the look of the Titan, but the thing that puts me off is obviously the size of it. I like things that fit on my desk. I mean, that Titan, I could fit one, one of its feet on my desk, or maybe the head, um, but yeah, I certainly won't be able to fit everything. So that, that's kind of what puts me off doing the Titan. That's why, I think I, it was about three, four days ago, um, I typed in most expensive... Warhammer model, um, and this came up obviously because of Squidmar. Um, I mean, it's obviously they're expensive anyway, but the one that he sold was it £25,000 or something daft? Which, well, it was this one actually, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I think he got it for about was it three, four grand, painted it, and then sold it for 25 So that, that's not that's not a bad mark, markup, is it really? Um, but as well, let's, let's bring that up so you can see a bit more. Of what I'm doing. Well, I say at the moment, all I'm going to do is get a few of these sprues um, tidied up, cleaned up, 
um, and then obviously I can make them into the box shape. Um, yeah, so, so in today, I say this stream, what's the time now? See, look, it's, oh no, I started at half eight and I say it's only been like just under half hour. Um, I'm probably going to stream for about two hours, but in my head, I always think I'm going to get so much done. And when I do the live streams, I end up getting about a tenth of what I expected to get done, done. Um, but as I haven't got to get up early in the morning or do anything in the morning, I'm going to stream until, well, until you guys get bored of me, I guess. Because um, I would like to get, say, the framework done. It won't be the whole of the framework for this. I mean, if I can literally just get this bit done, um, obviously 3D, not just a flat panel, um, then, yeah, I'd be happy. Say, because I haven't, I really haven't got much in the way of screws. Um, so, yes, I'm not too sure how much of this I'm going to be able to get done. But that's why I say this, I'm only going to do one, well, probably only going to do one sprue video a month. Um, just because then there is no rush for me to sort of get it done to get the video out. Uh, Makes I've got quite a lot of other videos, well, I think I'm currently working on about four different videos. I like... I like to work on quite a few things at once, just because then, I mean, you can't, probably can't hear it, but I've got something printing. So it's nice to work on a variety of things, because if there's something printing, or I painted something and I'm waiting for it to dry, then I can work on other things while that's all happening. Just because I like to, well, I like to be doing stuff, really. I like to be busy. Not too busy, just busy enough. And that's kind of why with these um, the live streams, I'm not going to sort of say, oh yeah, I'm going to do one every Tuesday at 10 or or whatever. Um, just because I, <laughs> it has to sound bad, I don't like having to do things at certain times. I, I like doing things when I want to do them. <laughs> um, so yes, that's why, obviously, this one now. But I mean, I'm, depending on how I am, I might do another one in the morning. Um, depending on how much I get done now. Um, so, because my plan was kind of to get the box shape done for this and then to roll out some panels. Uh, again, if you haven't seen me make any of the sprue panels, um, it's really simple. It is just a case of getting... Uh, a couple of greaseproof sheets. I get some sprue goo, dollop it in the middle, put the other one on top, flat it out with my hand a little bit. And then I've got a roller, and I've got rollers that have got these like um, height adjusters on the end. So I basically put that on, and then you roll it out, and you can get it whatever height you want. So I think these ones are two millimeter. I have got um, other bits you can put on that are one millimeter, and I have got ones that are six millimeters. So depending on how thick you want to have the, um, the panels, then you just put the, the things on, and you can roll it out. And again, again, you obviously roll it out, then you have to leave it for. I, don't, I normally do things overnight, so you have to leave it for at least eight hours. Um, if not a bit more so if I can I might get some panels rolled out tonight as well um, just so they're ready for the morning but again we'll see how things go because I <laughs> as much as I kind of like to I like planning things or I like to have an idea of a plan uh, but things don't always go to plan and that's fine I, I just wing it then uh, see them then gaming how do I get my supply of sprues I've got a dealer um, no, you guys. Uh, last year, um, when I was doing a lot of sprue builds, um, I had a lot of people send me sprues, and there was one, there was one point I had, um, I think it was twelve boxes. If you can think of like removal size boxes that are say I don't know about a foot and a half by about two foot by about a foot and a half high, so reasonable size um, boxes, and I had about twelve of them full of sprues and uh, it got to a stage where I had to sort of start telling people don't send more sprues because uh, I literally had no space so yeah I had no space no space for sprues um, but I've just recently moved um, I haven't moved far <laughs> in fact I've moved 20 feet upwards so I'm still in the same block of flats it's only a small block it's only five flats uh, but I'm now on the top floor um, but it's bigger by quite a bit so I have now got room to store more stuff, which again is another reason why I'm going to get into doing sprue builds. And I'm also going to be doing um, some scratch building as well, just because I've now got the room to store lots of plastic bits and pieces that you'd normally throw away 
I'm going to store them just so I can do some scratch building. Oh, pardon me. So, uh, yeah, so that's how I get my supplies of uh, sprue, is you lovely people. Um, Piper, is there a max time you should leave the sprues in your stone? Um, flash yeah, so I, I kind of generally find it's, it's a minimum of eight hours. That, that's what I find. Um, but obviously, it depends on the size of the jar, how much you put in, and all the rest of it. So I normally... Oh, so I get these jars, um, just because they're nice and wide. Wide jars are better, because you don't want like a skinny, tall one. You're better off going for a wider, short one. Um, kind of sounds a bit like me. But these are the better ones, just because it's easier to scoop the stuff out, for starters. So with these kind of jar, I kind of filled the jar half full with acetone, and then filled it right to the top with, obviously, lots of lovely sort of cut-up sprue bits. Um, I always generally do it and then leave it overnight. But if I was doing it like during the day, if I like say in the morning I filled one of these up, it's at least seven, eight hours and then it'll be fully sprue goo. Um, yeah, because I've kind of found that leaving it longer doesn't make it any more, um, what's the word, softer? Yeah. It gets to a certain softness. Um, <laughs> And then it stays there. It doesn't get softer. So you, it's not like, oh yeah, if I left it in there for like two weeks, it would be like runny, like water. It wouldn't. After about eight, nine hours, it gets to a consistency and it, it stays at that consistency. Which is a shame because it, it'd be nicer if you could get this um, a lot softer and a lot gooier. Um, although someone did mention a long time ago, rather than using acetone, there's something else you can use. But he did say it was more of a, a chemical that you wouldn't normally get in your house or you wouldn't use it it was a more of a an industrial kind of chemical um, so as much when I use this I normally obviously I always have the windows fully open when I was doing the town mantle and I had this jar open all the time I was wearing a mask I wear gloves um, but this other stuff that this chap mentioned it's a lot more uh, dangerous <laughs> but he did say it will turn this stuff into almost runny water but obviously you wouldn't want to use it Streams are fun. They are fun. I, I do like streams. They are. It's, it's a bit of a laugh. Um, I say, once I get over the, the point of me, but I'm sitting in a room on my own, <laughs> waffling away, <laughs> once I get past that, yeah, it's not too bad at all. Uh, which is why I like when you guys ask questions, or even if you guys are just talking amongst yourselves, every now and then I'll look up and just sort of have a little read of what you guys are saying. Um, it's fun. Yeah, so it, it would be so much nicer though when I can read, look this way and read that one. Because I feel weird that I keep having to look over um, over this way. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> box full. Was that Scoot? A sprue dealer. Yeah. I meet him in the back of the Tesco's car park. And we, uh, we both sort of park up next to each other. Open up the boots on our car. Look around. And then do a quick exchange. Obviously, no money parts hands. I'll just give them a nod and a thank you. But, yeah. Is, Andre, is my dealer that guy in Acetone Alley? Yeah, that's, yeah. So now that would have sounded better, wouldn't it? Rather than saying Tesco's car park, I should have read that comment first. And I could have said, yeah, I'll meet him in Acetone Alley. I missed out on that. But, uh, never mind. Uh, looks like the pizza loving gal is a bit hungry. Um, she wants my burger. Who are madam? You after my burger? You want my meat? Radio. So, so I'm going to cut quite a few of these up just so when I make the frame, I can once I start, I can sort of carry on. So that's the other big thing with these um, live streams, which is why I always wonder why you guys like watching them so much because sometimes they can be really dull. Um, I know when I built that town manta. I spent ages, I think, I think the first two, three streams, even I thought were quite dull, because there's a lot, there's a lot of preparation. When it comes to making things with sprues, you have to think ahead, um, especially if you're using, say, the sprue goo, and you need to leave it for like seven, eight hours to turn into sprue goo, and then another seven, eight hours for it to turn back out of sprue goo. Um, there's a lot of thinking ahead, a lot of planning ahead, um, and I've forgotten where I'm going. 
oh yeah so sometimes the beginning of these streams can be boring because it takes a long time to do almost anything but then once you start building the thing up all the rest of it kind of goes a bit quicker uh, which is pretty cool uh, chaotic is uh, you're joining the fight on sprue dealing you're on the side you're on the side of sprue dealing yeah yeah I mean having to hide it in shadows should be able to do it out there anyway but uh, um, but yes I can't believe this is all I've got and the reason I've got this amount is because I still had obviously I had a um, uh, bits box and I did a um, bit of kit bashing uh, the other week. And that's when I found that I had quite a few sprues with bits on them. Um, so yes, I didn't have these bits and I wouldn't even have any sprues. So I mean, most of these are from uh, the Blood Bowl, which is why I obviously got the red ones and the green ones. Because um, they're like different colour teams. But um, yeah, so guys, if you have got any sprues, um, if you email me, I think my email's in the description. Um, if it's not in the description of this video, it will be in the description of the other videos. Uh, basically, it's just miniaturehobbyist at gmail.com. So, nice and simple. But, um, yeah, if you message me there, I'll give you details of where to send the sprues. Um, and, yeah, so any, anyone who sends me sprues, when I do the video, obviously it'll be this video, um, if you want, I can do a little shout-out um, just for the people that sent me sprues, basically. Uh, I think the game is more of a kit bash person than building from scratch. It's easier to use what you got than build. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think my problem is I, I kind of get bored easy sometimes, which is why I like the variedness of doing a bit of all sorts. Although I do sometimes, it's like now, obviously with D&D, I kind of start doing something and I get really hooked on it and I just do loads. And then I get to a point where it's like, oh, I'm getting bored of this now. And then I switch to something else. And then I do that for for quite some time so i really need to try and get into a nice rhythm of doing a little bit of this a little bit of that and a little bit of the other um just to vary it out because yeah cause i like scratch building i like kit bashing i like sprue building uh, i love obviously 3d printing my 3d printer is normally on the go most days there's always something being printed um so yeah so i like a bit of all sorts but i do seem to get carried away with just working on one sort of medium um, and then get bored and then go on to others. Yeah. Hey ho. Uh, Piper, thank you for the reply. I was going to make some flat sprue sheets. Yes. Uh, wondering if you ever used rollers for the clay. Yeah, I, I have. I've got, uh, again, I don't know where they are. Um, I 3D printed some rollers and I've rolled out the sprue goo and then used a roller on top. The only problem is with the sprue goo when you first get it out it sticks to everything um, doesn't matter what it is it'll stick to it apart from the grease proof paper so there's like a so you have to like roll roll out the sprue goo take the top sheet of grease proof paper off let the air get to the sprue goo um, but not too much but just the right amount <laughs> because if you then put the roller over the top and you haven't left it the right amount of time the sprue goo will just stick to the roller um, but then if you leave it too long it, um, the sprue goo's then formed a bit more of a, a layer so the roller won't make an indentation so it's, it's quite difficult um, yeah to use the rollers to leave like a, an impression oh it's doable it, it's just tricky is what I'm trying to say I guess Yeah, using the rollers on um, the foam. Yeah, I've done that quite a bit. And that, yeah, like I say, that, that works really, really well. Um, yeah, they are good. Uh, Andre's off to walk the dogs. So who let the dogs out? Andre. Uh, box, box Fox. I should really shorten my questions a little. Oh, sorry, did you... Oh, yeah, again, sorry, Box Fox. I... If, you, if you type at Miniature Hobbyist in the comment... It highlights it on my screen that it's to me because um, I've just seen your message now got to near the top of the screen uh, what should I make with my sprue goo I made a very little bottle of sprue goo now I need to figure out what to make um, epic scale vehicles oh 
Yeah, Sprugu isn't very good for making small stuff. Um, again, I can't reach it, but the like the mold, the mold I used to make the tiles, um, I mean that wasn't too bad, but to try and make a mold, a small mold, and then to try and cast something with Sprugu could be difficult. Um, but obviously, say I'm going to have a go at doing this emblem thingy. I'm going to make it out of plasticine um, and then make a mold of it and then obviously sprue goo to cast it. Um, so even this, even though I mean, this, is, this isn't small, but the detail in this may or may not come out well. Um, yeah, sprue goo is not the best for making small, delicate things. For making like terrain and rocks and walls, it's, it's great. Um, but yeah, small, detailed things. I think you possibly struggle. Um, uh, Arnold, uh, you're clipping the round studs from the sprues. Am I saving them? Yes, I am indeed, Arnold. And yeah, greetings from the Netherlands. Greetings from the UK land. <laughs> um, yeah, so all these, all these nibbly knobbly bits, as I call them, um, just because they are nibbly knobbly bits so all these bits I'm cutting off they'll go in the jar of acetone uh, to turn into sprue goo so yes and no no bits of sprues get wasted it all gets used somehow um, whether it's say so these bits are gonna be used to make the frame uh, once I've cut the rest up I'll make the frame and yeah all the, all these bits I'm cutting off um, yeah they're gonna be turned into sprue goo so pretty cool Uh, Piper, I feel the same, but I want to pick. Yeah, guys, ask whatever questions you want. Um, I don't mind answering the same questions either. So if someone asks a question, and then half hour later someone else asks the same question, that's fine. I don't mind repeating answers um, at all. So yeah, ask short questions, long questions. Uh, I will do my best to answer every question, even if I just waffle. And make something up. I'll try and answer. What's my opinion on kit bashing? I enjoy it. <laughs> so that's the thing. This, I mean, this is something again. If you're kind of like new to my channel, something I used to say a lot when I was doing lots of Warhammer stuff um, was that I'd never actually ever played Warhammer, and I was. I think I was doing about a year and a half this channel of just solely Warhammer stuff. Never ever played it, um, so yeah, that's, that's why I don't mind kit bashing stuff. But when I kit bash, I kit bash to make things that are just fun, different. So they're not really kit bashed to make them into a specific like army or person that would be used in Warhammer. Um, so yes, yeah, so I, I love kit bashing mainly because I've got a lot of kits or well, random kits. Um, it's like I say, I've, I've never had an army. Um, I love orcs. So if I ever did have an army, it would have been an orcs because I just love orcs. Um, but yeah, I've I've never played Warhammer, which is why it was always strange that this channel was very Warhammer orientated, um, and I never played it. So that's kind of why I got into doing more D and D stuff. Because I used to play D and D when I was young, um, very young, as in I started in 1983, um, and I think I finished 1986, 87 was when I sort of like got a real job. Uh, and the people I used to play with, we all kind of like split up. So yeah, I played between 83 and 87. Um, and then I started playing again um, about November of last year. So that's why I'm, I'm into doing D&D stuff, mainly because I'm now obviously printing lots of figures, um, like these sort, of, these sort of guys. Will he focus? No, should focus. Yeah, it's on autofocus. Come on, focus. Oh, there we go. Um, yes, that's why I'm printing off a lot of D&D &D figures like this chap um, and painting them uh, because I am playing well D&D. &D. So, yeah, but I, I, I do like orcs um, and I'm really gutted because I, I had a character. Uh, well, I had two. One called the Lonely Orc, uh, mainly because it was the first orc or one of the first orcs that I painted or made. Um, and then I used to always use him Whenever I was building or making anything, I used him as like the size comparison. 
um, just so I could make things obviously sort of similar size. Um, and he was called the Lonely Orc because obviously he, he had no friends. Um, he used to sit on my shelf and I only really, like got him out or used him uh, just to sort of gauge the size or something. Uh, but when I moved, I think I've lost him. I've got a few boxes of odds and ends that I need to go through, but I don't think he would be in one of the boxes. So I had the Lonely Orc, and again, some people will know who the next person is. I had a guy called Crazy Dave. Again, it was an Orc, uh, but he was an Orc in like a seated position. So whenever I made anything that um, well, required a driver, I would put Crazy Dave in it, and he would be my size comparison. So I am looking at uh, 3D printing a new Crazy Dave, um, but I'm going to try and make him so he looks like a crash test dummy. So it'll be like the, the head of an orc, but the body of a crash test dummy. Or certainly be painted like a crash test dummy. Um, just because, again, I'm, I'm going to be doing some more random stuff um, and not just D&D. &D. But, um, yeah, so it'll be printed stuff, kit bashing, scratch building, sprue building. Just, it's going to kind of go back to how it was <laughs> about six months ago where I did a bit of all sorts. Um Oh, Celtic, I got, you got ignored. No, sorry. Um, what was all of the first miniature hobbyist? My first video, um, funny enough, it had orcs in. <laughs> oh, no, it had one orc and then loads of them little, the littler ones. I forgot what they're called. Um, I keep thinking of Gringotts. They're not Gringotts. Uh, what are they called? But yeah, I kind of built an underground... Uh, mining sort of thing and that was my first build uh, well, oh sorry you scrolled off I'm going to have to go back up yeah apologies I so this is why I need to get um, it set up here because then when I'm looking at you guys or looking here at the corner of my eye I can see this orange block where someone's asking something um, just some human interaction oh so you're asking everyone what their their Oh, their first video was, uh, you saw the Speed Freak, yeah, the one with the plane that I put in resin. That's probably one of the only, or the, one of the main builds that I've done with resin that actually works. A lot of my uh, my resin videos, <laughs> I, I think I have no luck with resin. Um, yeah, yeah, again, apologies guys, if you do ask something and I don't answer, I'm not being rude, I just didn't see it. Because obviously it only stays so long then it obviously it scrolls off. Um, so yeah apologies and if you do put at miniature hobbyist and I don't answer again even more apologies because you're making it obvious you're asking me something and I still missed it um, if you're thinking it kept them to make something like was that coins at the treasure chest thingy uh, oh I've missed what you're answering now oh pardon me uh, Raphael have I ever thought about making a video about Shadowrun? Never heard of it. I've never heard of Shadowrun. So that's what I say. Honestly, there's, there's a lot of games, like tabletop games, I've not played or not heard of. The only thing that I've ever played is Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but obviously, I love miniatures. Uh, obviously, having a 3D printer. Oh, it's, it's like being a kid in a, a toy shop. It really is, because obviously, whatever you want to print out, can go online and someone's probably made a file for it um, so yeah I, I love my 3d printer love it but yeah I, honestly there's so many tabletop games that I've, I've obviously definitely not played and there's a lot that I've not even heard of um, but yeah well, it's like when I recently printed off because obviously one of my other things I printed obviously got a nice big if I'm getting nearly focused It takes its time, doesn't it? Yeah, so obviously a lovely big chunky barbarian, and then I printed off obviously a little scale one um, for like six millimeter. Um, and I absolutely no, not six millimeter, fifteen millimeter. Uh, and I absolutely love the fact that I can print a little dude. So obviously it uses a lot less resin. It's easier to, well, I find it easier to paint because obviously you haven't got to be as neat because you can't see the definition uh, of painting. And obviously I can make smaller terrain for the small dude. So 
I am looking at finding a, a board game to play that requires small figures and then printing off and making my own small figures and then making the board to go with it. Um, just because I, yeah, I love this little dude. I think he's, I think he's awesome. So cute and mean looking. Anyway, well, let's put him back there. Again, I'm digress. I'm waffling. Oh, uh, oh. and we haven't got much done. Right, have I got enough to start building a bit of framework? Oh, let's do some of the grey ones because I think the grey ones are actually a bit thicker. So I think for the main body, it will be better to have the thicker ones. So let's move these thinner ones to one side. Have a little drink and then see if I've missed or who I've missed answering questions about. Uh, Box Fox is making his own. I don't know, I've got my ear budding. I was going to put some music in or music on, but I've had it in my ear and I've not put music in, so I'm going to take it out. <laughs> uh, sorry, so you're making your own giant mech 3D model right now, hopefully ready to print soon. Oh, cool. See, I, that's something I'd love. I'd love to be able um, to use like, the 3D software and make something, or even use the 3D software. Um, take a couple of prints and do sort of like kit bashing, but obviously 3D model making bashing. Um, obviously that's not the correct term, I'm sure there's a term for 3D bashing. <laughs> Sounds wrong, but you know what I mean. Yeah, because I'd love to be able to do that, that'd be quite cool. Um, lonely Orc is even lonelier. Oh yeah, I say it, honestly, I'm really not too sure if he's made it with the... So I only moved, say, from downstairs, upstairs. Um, so it's not like I moved far, but obviously I did box up quite a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, I and I've not come across him. Because I thought he might be with my uh, my bits box, uh, but he wasn't in there. So I'm really not too sure what's happened to poor Dave or even Crazy Dave. Uh, sorry, Lonely Orc or Crazy Dave. Right, we'll just do a few more of these and then we'll have a go at gluing. Um, but say it's like most things with the sprues, uh, there's a lot of preparation that goes in into things with them. That and the fact, again, if I, was, if I was sitting here just doing this on my own without doing a live stream, the frame would have been made by now and I'd have rolled out several um, sprue panels. But obviously, where's the fun in doing that without you guys there? Oh, nothing's not scrolling up now. What's, what's going on? Oh, there's loads of comments and questions. Oh, sorry, guys. I've <laughs> Yeah, because I scrolled up, I forgot to scroll back down. So obviously there's a lot of new comments. Again, apologies. If I'm answering something that you've asked five minutes ago, <laughs> um, I will get there eventually. Just quite a while. Gretchen, yes, thank you. Sapient, yeah, Gretchen. Is it Gretchen? That's, even that sounds wrong. Gretchen. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Chris, what's my opinions on YouTube versus Twitch? I've got a Twitch account. I've never used it. Because um, I know you can link the two together. Because I'm using Streamlabs um, to do this. And I know you can link it somehow so that you only need to do, obviously, one live stream. And it can go out to both. Uh, but I just, I've never really used Twitch. So I'm not too sure yeah. what I'm doing there, to be honest. I wouldn't, wouldn't have a clue. Um, you're looking at doing silicone puppet making. Oh, cool. Hand puppets and rod puppets. Oh, awesome. Yeah, say, so I've never used Twitch, so I really can't comment on, on that at all. Uh, grots, that's the word. Yes. Yeah, I didn't think it was Gretchen's, um, but grots, yeah. Uh, Piper, I want to make a dice tray out of cardboard. Uh, do you have any advice on the, the what the beat thing to apply for more structure and painting? The beat thing. Uh, paper mache. Yeah, I, I like paper mache. But again, the problem with paper mache is you have to wait quite a few days for it to like fully sort of like harden, so it's it's strong. Oh, pardon me. But you can get the uh, like the felt that goes at the bottom. 
uh, just so it's nicer for the dice to roll on. Uh, obviously it doesn't make as much noise as if you're rolling it on, well, cardboard or, or anything else. Um, yeah. Sapien Underground for a 50 mil scale, you like Hordes of the Things war game in the late, late 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I recently started looking at the um, Epic Warhammer. Um, and I quite like the look at that because you get loads of like little tanks and sort of full armies, but they still don't take up much room, which I kind of like the idea of. I guess the one thing that kind of put me off Warhammer, the fact that it's, well, one that it's kind of like a war game as opposed to, say, I, I like D&D. Because D and D, a bit more fantasy, and it's me taking the role of a character rather than me controlling an army. So that's kind of why I prefer the D and D. But um, pizza loving gal is happy, which is good to hear. Good to see a little. Is that a bunny? I think it's a bunny. And is it a happy bunny? That's the thing. A happy and satisfied bunny. Uh, Arnold was reacting on the question about clipping off the round studs. I thought you might keep them to make coins. Yeah, I have done a video, well, about two years ago, one of my first videos uh, with sprues. And yet, yeah, if you have a look, I've taken all these um, all these round bits off, put them in a pile, painted them gold, and yeah, a nice gold coin pile. Um, so yeah, there's a video of that somewhere out there. Uh, Arnold, uh, but you just clean off the sprues and toss the clips off in the sprue. Yes. Yeah. Well, apart from the few that sort of like twang off and you lose. Oh, that's the one thing I forgot about doing this. You'll, it's, it's almost like Lego. You'll walk around and you'll get one of these stuck in your, in your foot, as in one of these, these little bits. Um, it doesn't hurt as much as Lego. But you find that when you step on it, it will, it will stick in your foot and sort of stay there until you like almost pull it out. Um, yeah, but you do get a few that just sort of twang off. That's why generally when I cut them, I put my finger over the bit I'm cutting because otherwise, yeah, it will twang off. Oh, I forgot to scroll down again. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Matthew, have I ever thought of using things like sand or fine sawdust uh, to use as filler for the sprue goo um, to make more from less sprue? I can't say I have. No. I think the reason I probably haven't or even thought about it is because when I make things out of sprues, I like to advertise it or make the video and sort of say it's 100% sprue. Um, just I think it's... It sounds quite cool to make something just using sprues and nothing else. So yeah, you'll, you'll find that most of my sprue videos, if not all of them, it's it's a hundred percent sprue. Uh, nothing else. Well, there's glue and paint, obviously, um, but yeah, the, the main building material uh, is sprues. So yeah, I, I don't really add anything to it. Uh, Gretchen plural grot singular. Ah, there we go. So I didn't know that. Say so two years of doing Warhammer, didn't know that. Uh, uh, made of something, it could be a cool idea to make a swampy themed orc base with sprues. Sprue. Yeah, say so sprue goo is great for making things that don't need to be neat, basically. Um, I have to make one of the, the very first things I made out of sprue goo was the great unclean one. And if you take a look at it, the sprue goo is awesome because you put it on top and it just like oozes down. Um, so it really can be used to make things look sort of really, well, oozy, disgusting, um, rotten skin, that kind of stuff. Right, I'm just going to cut these two up and then we'll actually do some gluing. So... Yeah, so six, 60 people watching me cut sprues up. Uh, well, this, this reminds me 
of oh many many moons ago uh watching bill making stuff sort beads out um yeah it's amazing what people watch because i was watching it uh, but again if you watch bill making stuff he's a he's a very funny he's a very funny chap uh very dry humor which i like so yes yeah, so you, you could sit and watch him sort beads out because he's uh, he's just bill making stuff he's funny Going down, cool. Yeah, so I, I can see that people are writing stuff on my uh, my iPad, but I just can't make out any of the words. Yeah, it doesn't help. <laughs> right, nearly done. All right, let's, let's put them two there, because even though I'm getting bored of cutting these things off now. There's so many nibbly knobbly bits you can cut off. Let's, let's start getting a bit of framework made so it looks like I've done something because obviously at the moment it's like I've not really made anything other than a mess um, and a load of little sprue bits that are well possibly all over the floor I think I've caught most of them I know one twangs off over there somewhere but um, yeah there we go it's not too bad been here an hour and I've I've shown you a picture of what I'm going to make, and then I've cut nibbly knobbly bits off. There's value for money. I've just realised. I wonder why the sound wasn't working earlier than it was because I I just noticed. I thought I added my microphone, but I didn't, and yet you guys can hear me. Very uh, very bizarre. Um, Box Fox Legos only hurt when you don't expect it, but it is, yeah, yeah. They do sort of take you by surprise. But I say these bits, these bits don't hurt. They they just stick in your foot for a bit longer. It's almost like a splinter, uh, but probably hurt less than a splinter. Uh, no one expects Lego to hurt as much as it does. Yeah, quite right, Alan. Uh, Andre, you watched you watched about six hours of bead sorting. I don't think I watched six hours. I think. I don't, well, I don't know because it was it was a long time ago. Um, I think I went off and on, off and on a few times. But uh, right, so so again, so this is where I know, let's get this other thing in. I need to do obviously bits of filming here and there. And the other thing, when I do do filming, um, quite often I'll film bits even if I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to keep them in because obviously you better off filming it and then not using it rather than not filming it and then thinking oh i wish i'd kept that bit to sort of show something so obviously this i'm just going to show a little bit here um obviously all these nibbly knobbly bits that i've cut off and the fact that they don't get wasted they do get put into the jar of acetone um yeah it'll be turned into nibbly knobbly bits if i can pick them all up um i'll get them in the end Oh, there we go. Um, Sapient, uh, I have made progress. <laughs> uh, well, say it, it does. It always always makes me laugh how little progress I make when I'm doing live streams. Um, yeah, yeah. Things don't normally take as long as they do take. So honestly, when I do a live stream, however long it takes me to do it on a live stream, if I wasn't live streaming. It would be at least about a tenth of the time to actually do it in real life, kind of thing. Right. So let's. Not oh, Stephen Renwick just subscribed. Thank you very much. There we go. Cool. Oh, it looks super black, doesn't it? The um, the acetone. I say it, it's more of a dark green here, but on the screen that looks like it's uh, black squid ink. I say that's purely because of the um, the red and the green. Yeah, because I put it in the other one as well. I've not got a jar with just acetone and the grey. So if you just put the grey sprues in acetone, it would be a lot more, uh, a whole lot lighter, not quite see through, but it would be a lot clearer. 
Um, but for some reason, yeah, when you put the, the red and the green in, or is there blue? I think there might be blue in there as well, actually. Mm, can't see it. I can see like red and green here, but yeah, there might have been blue. I'm not too sure. But yeah, you put, you put different colour sprues in, and that's what makes it go super dark. But um, right, so let's film this. So yes, yeah, so this is the reason why obviously I have the the lines on it. It just helps me get things in the centre, nice and straight, and not wibbly wobbly. Although that's obviously wibbly wobbly. In. Right. Yeah, that looks good enough. So we'll do that. Play with the nibbly knobbly bits because again, in my head, I kind of think of what I'm going to say when I edit it. So I'm going to say something about all these nibbly knobbly bits. Don't get wasted. They get put in the jar of acetone and they get turned into ooey gooey spruey stuff. Even though it's a bit difficult to pick this stuff up, but that'll do. Yeah, and there we go. Show it off. And that's that job done for that bit of filming. Right, let's get these other little bits though and we'll put them in just because they'll end up on the floor otherwise. Smoin's in the house. All right, buddy. I haven't uh, seen you for a while, but then again, that's probably because you haven't seen me for a while because I haven't been doing these. Have you well? Oh, so there's still little bits of uh, nibbly knobbly bits on my desk. So I normally have a box. Um, so when I take a couple of nibbly knobbly bits off, they go straight in the box. Uh, but I'm not prepared. I've not got my nibbly knobbly box. So next time I stream, I will have that. Because what I'm probably going to do as well, with with the building of this, um, I'm probably going to do the building of this in live streams. Um, just to say, because when you do build things with, with sprues, you have to do a lot of planning ahead, getting stuff ready. Um, so yeah, because I'm going to have all the stuff ready, it kind of makes sense that I might as well do them as a live stream. I'm probably going to vary the live streams though. There'll be some late evening, obviously like tonight, um, but there might be some that are early morning. Just because sometimes it's easier for me to sort of get up, sit at my desk, do some building work, and then do other stuff later on. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's why I'm not going to say stream live streams are going to be at a certain time, um, just because they may well be higgledy piggledy here and there, all over the place. Right, let's move things out of the way because I can't stand my desk being too messy. Not that it's messy, but. I like it to be organised. Oh, God, it feels really warm. Even though I've got the windows open. Uh, there's a cool breeze coming in from this side, anyway. Right. Um, let's leave them ones over there because they're not fully cut. So some of these are a little bit thinner. So generally, for the main box shape or the outer box shape. I prefer to use the the thicker thicker sprues. Um, some of these smaller, thinner ones, they can be used as like braces in the middle. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try and use the thicker ones first. Um, some of these have still got little sort of bumps and things on them. So what I'm going to do is when I glue it together, before I put any of the um, the frames um, or panels, sorry, on it, then if there's anything sticking up, I can just shave them off afterwards which is cool yeah this morning it has been a while I'm say I'm gonna try and get back into doing live streams um, and obviously doing some Warhammer stuff which obviously has been quite a while in the coming but um, yeah so I'm a quick look just checking that I've not missed um, oh Alan shadow run is an awesome series of games I think orcs with cybernetics and magic. See, I like magic. 
magic is the stuff I like. But, uh, yeah, cool. Ooh. Yeah, see, I definitely need another screen, uh, another screen setup. Right, so yeah, so obviously I've filmed myself already showing this picture, drawing the black frame around it, because um, the black frame is the, it's kind of like going to be the main sort of frame that I'm going to build. There's obviously another bit of a, a framework on the top, and obviously all these gubbins at the back, bottom and side. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's this main framework I'm going to build. So this, again, whenever I do these kind of things, where possible, it makes it a lot easier if you print out to scale the thing you're making um, so yeah if you saw the tower manta you would have seen i printed out loads of sheets because obviously it was well it was bigger than my desk um, and then what i did was i printed all the sheets out and i divided it into three sections so i got the main main torso and then the left and the right wing uh, but obviously because this thing it's big but it's not big big um, this will fit nicely on my desk as well which is pretty cool so yes this will be made as one one unit right so let's check I've got everything I need we'll have them we'll have cutters uh, I did have a pen around here somewhere I don't want to do all right oh uh, check out one page rules yeah I like one page rules I've done quite a few of these minis um, yeah he's got some awesome stuff cool right Let's see where we're going to set this up. So I guess, again, the other reason of obviously printing something out to scale, then drawing around it, I can literally just put this up and then cut it. Uh, so it does just make things so much easier. Especially, obviously, because this sort of box you see, everything I cut, I need to cut twice, because obviously this side, then the other side, and then I just do a framework in between. Um, this bit here goes off at a small angle, which is why I'm going to leave that bit off and just make this other frame. Um, make two lots of that, join them together, and then do that other little bit at the front, really. So, yeah, so nice nice and simple, really. Which is pretty cool. Right, so say now we're actually going to start building something. So it's only taken just over an hour, and we're now going to, going to build. Um, right, so I want to film some of this. So there we go, we can sort of say I'm going to offer this up. Oh, so it's going to be that bit, isn't it? Put it there. Let's do that, and then we'll say we need two of everything. Uh, yeah, that bit can be used at the back, which is good. Right, we'll move it over. Show it all up, it's perfect. Oh, this top bit's going to need two, which is a bit of a shame. None of these are, yeah, none of these are long enough. That's a bit of a shame. Again, so we we'll cut two of them straight away. filming so say so I don't have to film every single little bit obviously you've seen me cutting some of the bits up so that's fine for the video and then I'll do some more filming when I come to actually sort of start gluing some bits together
right, just one more bit to do, and then we can start doing a bit of gluing. So I say, it always seems like a slow process to begin with, but then once you've got the, uh, the framework done, um, and then you add in the panels, then it starts to uh, sort of take shape, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of the same with, um, if you guys saw the, the Orc Stomper I made. Again, that was another one I, I live streamed, and it took quite a while to build the framework, so obviously it's quite a, a size of that one. Um, but yeah, once the framework was built, and then the panels started going on, it obviously went a lot quicker, um, I was a bit more interesting to watch. <laughs> uh, right, so let's try and keep these places I know. So yeah, so it's just a case of really putting one of these together, putting the other one together, and then doing the uh, the bits in between. So I've kind of missed off or missed cutting some bits off of this one. So I'm going to cut these first before I glue. And there's still some other bits on there that could do with being uh, sort of taken off just to make it smoother. But we'll say we'll glue it together and then if there are any bits that are protruding or we'll make it bad for the, um, the panels, then I can just uh, chop them off later. See, to make it easier, some of these bits I can cut at angles as well. Um, for, for this, I'm just going to use super glue. Um, mainly because I used to have cement glue, but then because I stopped doing sprue builds and the kit bashing, um, the cement glue I had, obviously I used it all up and then didn't bother buying any more. Whereas obviously super glue, um, I use this for kind of everything. So that's why I've got more of this sort of sitting around. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's why I'm using this. But you can use obviously normal cement glue for the sprues, just like you can with the figures. Um, but yeah. I'm only using super glue because that's what I've got, basically. Uh, Say so if you, you'd make a, uh, a chaos version for gives all irregularities, yeah. Well, like I say some of the uh, the panels I can make now, they are a lot better and smoother than when I first used to make panels. Um, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes you get the the rough panels uh, because this is quite a small thing, and there's lots of little bits sort of on top. Um, yeah. Oh, pardon me, it shouldn't come out too bad. And obviously the engine -y bit looks very sort of bitty, so that'll, that'll be quite good for the old uh, sprue goo um, kind of things as well, really. All right, so let's move this a bit nearer. And again, so we'll do some videoing. Um, so that's the only thing though, with this arm I've got, I can only tilt it so far forward um, so sometimes I do kind of have to go to the side just to get more of a, an aerial view. view. So it's not too bad. Um, have I put a mini marine against a template? Yes. Um, well, I haven't got any Marines. Um, well, I've got these ones. So I've kind of put him up against it and his head seems near enough. Um, I think he might be a, a little bit bigger by like, well, a fraction. Um, so I printed out a couple of these sheets. One was obviously a bit bigger, but the one that was bigger was a bit too big. Um, this one was obviously a bit smaller. I could have printed that again and gone somewhere in between but I kind of like the size of this one, as in to build it, for it sitting on my desk or wherever else. So this might be a millimetre smaller than it, it probably should be. But yeah, his head is pretty much the same size as the other head. But yeah, this, this is the only kind of marine I've got. Um, 
Yeah, it's like I, I love the look of Marines, but I've never. I, I don't know. I, I've got some Marines. Them, um, so the Primaris ones, the ones that I, I kit bashed last week with the old flamethrowers. Um, but again, these figures, I've had these for about two years almost. I kind of got these right at the beginning of the channel and then just never never used them or never did anything with them. Which is why I say I don't mind kit bashing these as in cutting them right up. Just because I know I'm never going to use them for, for anything else. So, yeah, it's worth having fun kit bashing. Um, so was that Alan, um, did I find the measurements? You posted the ones you could find. Oh, I didn't see. Um, uh, yeah, no, I never, I never saw that. So literally, so I've printed out the one that uh, Squidmar made. Um, and earlier on today, I was watching loads of his videos where he built it, painted it, and all the rest of it. And basically, I'm working on how it looked in his hands. Um, so as in, like, when he had his hands up against it, how many fingers high it was and like that gun was like the width of a finger and obviously the width of this was kind of like like <laughs> like that so yeah so this is kind of like eyeballed on squidmar's one because this is squidmar's one printed out um and how it looked in his hands and i've printed it out so it looks similar in my hands even though i think his hands might be longer i'm not too sure but so it's yeah it's eyeballed um but it's, it's it's there. It's somewhere there. It's not a million miles away. It's not like it's a foot too big or a foot too small. It's we're talking millimeters here and there. Um, so yeah, it's not too bad. Right, just check in the video of how it looks, and again we will set that going. Yeah, so the setup now is quite good, as in what you see on your main screen is what I'm actually video capturing um, in HD, which is kind of makes it a lot easier for me having less kind of like cameras all over the place. All right, so this one, I so what we'll do is we'll stop the video in. Just so we can get in nice and close and I can show that I'm basically cutting the sprue at an angle just to make it easier um, so it aligns up better so I can try and get this at a decent angle so it's not too weird. It's exactly <laughs> box fox, box fox. You're exactly right. Um, yeah, as long as this one's never held up against the real one, then yeah, you'd never know it wasn't the exact right size. But say the fact that there's different size ones these anyway. Um, obviously, this is the 97 one, but the newer one by Forge World is bigger. Um, and from what I looked at or found earlier. There are a few others that are a little bit in different size, but, um, but yeah. Uh, the mic is a little low. Um, okay, although on my screen it's showing it's going from green to yellow and almost in the red. Um, yeah, see, if you can, you can turn yours up, great, because I can't really turn mine up just because it's showing it has been quite high. Um, it may or may not be, I'm not too sure. So what I'm going to do is obviously once I've done this, I'm going to watch the video just to see what the sound's like. Because at the moment I can't tell. Um, yeah, I've got no idea what you're hearing. But I'm presuming you can hear me to some extent because obviously you've been asking questions, I've been answering. Uh, so fingers crossed. You can hear some of what I'm saying.
laptop. So the one problem about doing this, how I'm doing this, this is going to stick to the picture. <laughs> so when I put it away, it's going to rip it a little bit. Um, but, uh, that's fine. Yeah, so let me get, when I do things, they, they may well be better, easier, quicker ways of doing it. I just do things the way I do things. Um, and I have fun, basically. Yeah, so none of my videos are like tutorials as such. They're just, this is how I've done it. Um, and I'm sure you can improve on how I, I do things. Well, so yeah, it's like my last video when I was kit bashing, and I had one of these, one of these kind of guys, and I wanted to take his backpack off. Um, my blade wasn't quite doing it. My snips were too narrow to get over it, so I used a saw. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to use on a miniature to try and hold it with a proper saw, um, but I've still got ten fingers, so I didn't kill anyone, so it's not too bad. But yeah, so everything I do, it's not this is the best way of doing it. This is the way I've done it. But again, with the, uh, the frame, it doesn't have to look too neat. Obviously, I try and make it as neat as I can. Um... But the fact that this framework is going to have, well, it's going to be covered totally. Um, obviously with the sprue, well, my fingers by the looks of it. Obviously with the sprue panels, it's going to be completely covered. So yeah, it doesn't need to look perfect. It just needs to do the job, which is obviously keep its shape. Um, so yeah, so that's why sometimes we put it together, just chuck loads of glue on it. Uh, right, we'll give that a second. Because I need to try and pull that off and put the, um, well, make another one. So in this case, I'm making two of the frames. And then I say, I've got no photos or pictures of uh, how wide this is. In my head, when I was watching the videos earlier, it seemed to be like that sort of distance. So it was almost, it wasn't, because that, that bit there wasn't square. It was literally like about three quarters of that height was the top bit. And I say then this front bit goes in at a very, very small angle. Um, so that's why I'm going to make that front bit separately. Uh, Smoin, I have fun. That's the spirit of the hobby. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's the spirit of the hobby. Having fun. Um, obviously, we try and learn things as we go, which is why obviously we watch other people. Um, sometimes we can learn by their mistakes. Oh, and sometimes we just obviously copy them because it works um, but yeah it is it's, it's having fun that's what the whole this this channel is all about me well, me having fun and well obviously it's me having fun and keeping busy during uh, the second lockdown that I started doing it uh, leave the paper in pre-painted <laughs> yeah yeah I should have put the uh, the box shape on the outside yeah I just printed this out slapped it on jobs are good <laughs> Uh, oh well. So yeah, I've got feeling we'll give that a little bit because I reckon I pull that off, it's going to rip the paper something rotten, or it's just going to fall to bits. And this is where a good old scraper again, right tool, right job. Failing that, whatever you've got to hand, <laughs> bodge it and fix it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be using this just to uh, get in there. Uh, yeah. So, say, so yeah, next time I'm going to try and get some sort of screen beside the webcam just so I haven't got to keep looking over here to read your comments. Just because obviously I prefer looking sort of at you, well, even though I can't see you. Um, just because obviously it looks better for the video, me kind of looking towards you, I guess. But um, yeah, so we'll try and get that sorted next time. But uh, say, so I haven't done a stream properly for ages, but I, I have now got a lot of things set up. Um, so it should then just be a case of me clicking a few buttons and straight into it. Um, not having to worry about the sound uh, or anything else really. 
which should be good. Uh, Ninja Ginger, sprue builds are back. They are. Um, yes, anyone who just sort of joined up or didn't see the very beginning, um, I did used to enjoy doing sprue builds, but then I think I kind of did too many, and that kind of took all the fun out of it. So that's why I'm looking now at doing one sprue build a month, um, and it will be done in between all my other videos, as in I'll be building this in between all my other videos. So I'll still enjoy the sprue build because I won't be doing too many of them. Um, and then it also doesn't matter how long it takes to do a sprue build. Because before, sometimes I would do one um, and then find it was taking a long time, but I wanted to get a video out. So I then almost spent more time doing the video, but not enjoying it as much, if that makes sense. So that's why just doing one sprue video a month gives me a lot more time to enjoy what I'm doing while I'm doing lots of other things right let's see how well this is gonna come off or or not should have printed a couple of these out really shouldn't I, I guess but i kind of wasn't thinking that i was going to glue it straight onto there well, i'm not sure why i'm sure what was it built last time that's probably the town town manor i'm sure when i did that i did the framework and that obviously i just glued straight onto the to the bit of paper But I think it's coming off reasonably well. I should still be able to see everything nicely. Oh, I think that could be it. Uh, oh, no, one more. Oh. Come off your monkey. Right, there we go. So there's kind of like oh, one half. So if I move that out of the way, bring that forward. We can go up in the world. Yeah, so there's sort of one part made. Obviously, it does still need a little bit of time to settle with the glue. Um, so yeah, so it's a case of making another one of these and then doing the supports that go between this and the other half. Um, and yeah, and then that will be one little bit of it done. Uh, but so that's why in my head I always know these kind of builds start off very slow not always the most exciting things to watch i i appreciate that um uh, but it's one of those bits where it kind of needs to be done it's like groundwork in a house so before a house gets built obviously you've got to dig dig the ground pour the cement get it ready and then bosh start building and uh, it's kind of the same with this the, the first bit is a bit of a slow mundane sort of start and then once you get going it starts to look a lot better once there's actually something here you can see and then you're adding bits to it. All right, let's just check. I've still got all my bits. Oh, I didn't quite keep these in order. Is that one? No, is it there? Yep. Got a spare bit. All right, there we go. Um, Save so you why no inner struts. At the moment, I'm going to get this bit done that bit done join them together um, and then if I feel it needs more cross members then I'll put them in um, yeah plus I say the fact I haven't got many sprues so at the moment I want to kind of get the basic box shape done if I have got more sprues or enough sprues and this needs them then I can add them um, but yeah it's, it's a case of getting the box shape done and then Plus, unlike the Town Manta, this thing isn't that big, so it doesn't need to have as much of a like solid core to it. Plus, once you get the um, uh, the panels glued on top of this, that obviously gives it a lot more support, so it's not going to like twist and bend. Um, yeah, had that answer that question? Inner struts. So it might have some, might not. <sighs> Uh, Stephen's got to go. Well, cheers for being here, Stephen. Uh, you go and have a good blog. Um, yeah, whatever it is you're blogging about, is it yourself or something you've done? Have fun. Yeah, cheers for being here. All right, so yeah, I'm not going to bother filming doing the next one because obviously it's the same, same dealio as the first one. Um, I'll film a bit when I'm putting the two together and putting the uh, 
the cross members um, in. Again, all little nibbly knobbly bits put to one side. I need to get a box. So I used to always have a box. Um, only a little box, because obviously you only need a little box. Put the nibbly knobbly bits in a little box. And then when you're done, nibbly knobbly box goes in the, uh, the jar of acetone. Obviously not the box, but the, uh, but the bits. All right, let's line these all up. Chuck on a bit of glue. Hello, Liv Gunner. How are you tonight? Liv's my daughter, by the way, guys. She likes popping on every now and then just to check what I'm doing. Oh, your Play-Doh stuff turned up today, Liv. If I can, I'll drop it off tomorrow. Yeah, everyone say hi, Liv, because she likes it when you guys say hi. You're eating a what? A fab? What's that? A fab lolly. <laughs> yeah, daughter hobbyist. Uh, well, she kind of is because she likes, she loves cooking um, and she can make all sorts, but she loves making slime as well, which is always fun to clean up afterwards. Um, but she does also like to make things out of plasticine. Um, and I had a lot of Fimo, the coloured stuff. So she was making lots of stuff out of that. And then with her pocket money this month, she decided to buy loads more. So she's got a nice big box of, I think it's 64 pieces. And it comes with a load of tools and all kinds of other bits. So yes, yeah, so Liv is kind of like a miniature hobbyist because she does, um, yeah, she likes making things. <laughs> More, more mess than anything. But I'm sure she won't mind me saying that because she does make a lot of mess. As much as she says she's not going to make a mess, she does make a mess. But that's what kids do. Oh yeah, something I've not said guys, uh, in the video, uh, if you haven't already, if you can click that thumbs up button, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's been, what, nearly two hours and I've not mentioned it. But yeah, clicking the, click the, the like button, I say it's a simple thing to do, but it really does sort of let YouTube's algorithms and all that, even though I know I shouldn't keep looking at the algorithms, because that does affect what I do sometimes. Um, yeah, you guys clicking the like button does really affect the algorithm um, and it makes YouTube think oh hold on people like this will push it out um, so yeah so hitting the like button really does help a lot guys obviously if you don't like it then don't push the button I'm not gonna force anyone to push the button but um, I would appreciate it if you did let's top a little bit more of that off off with his head. The miniaturist hobbyist, yeah. <laughs> um. Right, so there we go. That's 
kind of that lot glued so we'll give that a uh, a second or two to well stick to the bit of paper <laughs> uh, right talking of analytics I've not looked for a while so let's have a quick look and I've not even really been looking um, 56 people watching that's cool because say hey, I think the last I know you guys do love sprue videos more than anything else um, so I'm under no illusion there that if I was doing a video about 3D printing or about D&D &D stuff, then I'd probably have half the viewers, um, which is fine. Um, so yeah, I do know that you guys do seem to like the Sprue videos. Well, and Warhammer, I think. Warhammer seems to get, it's really weird because Dungeon Dragons has obviously got as big as following as Warhammer, maybe more, I don't know. Um, and yet, yeah, Warhammer does seem to get sort of pushed pushed out by YouTube more, which is quite bizarre. <clears throat> but say it, it will really be just one well one like main build um a month with sprues um yes yeah, so guys i'm gonna do another little shout out oh pardon me um if you do have sprues lying around you don't think you're going to need and you'd like to sort of donate them to me uh, for me to use i would really appreciate that um all you need to do is message me at miniature hobbyist at gmail.com I think it is in the uh, the description anyway. But message me there, and I'll obviously let you know how you can sort of send them to me. And anyone that does send me any sprues, um, when I do do a sprue video, I will do a little shout out and mention uh, to everyone who's sent me sprues that wants me to mention them. Um, just obviously a, a thank you for sending me in your sprues. Um, so obviously I did have loads and loads and loads at one stage. In fact, I, I mentioned earlier I had about 12 boxes, and we're talking like big sort of boxes uh, full of sprues but then I did obviously the town mantle and that used up loads um, so that's why I've, I've barely got any sprues left I might have enough of my own sprues to make this not sure possibly not um, I've had a few people mention me already today gonna send me some sprues um, but I believe them ones are from America so obviously they're gonna take a little while to get here so, so especially more so if you're in the UK um, and you want to send me sprues that would be awesome I don't mind how you guys send them. If you cut them all up into like little bits um, and then put them in a box, because obviously you can cut them up and put them in a smaller box, by all means do that. Uh, I don't mind small sprues or sprues as they normally come. Uh, obviously these ones have had the uh, the centre bits cut out, because obviously I always cut the centre bits out and they're the bits that I chop up small, put in a jar, turn into ooey gooey sprue stuff. Um, I know someone did mention in one of the emails this morning that they had some sprues with bits on them. Um, they had a bits box, but their bits box was full. They didn't need any more bits. Uh, would I mind them sending me sprues with bits on? Again, no. By all means, send me the sprues with bits on. I will either chop the bits off and I'll put them in my bits box. Or if I look at them and think I'm never going to use that part in anything, then it probably will just get put straight into the acetone. And turned into goo um, so yeah guys send me any kind of sprues well what just Warhammer sprues because um, whenever I do obviously Warhammer builds I like to advertise it and only use Warhammer sprues just because I can then say it's 100% Warhammer made that makes it doesn't make sense but you know what I mean it's made from 100% Warhammer sprues because um, I've got quite a lot of WizKid D&D um, sprues um, but again, I'm going to keep them for any kind of D&D &D build that I do. Just so D&D &D sprues make D&D &D stuff. Warhammer sprues make Warhammer stuff. Simples. Where am I looking from? Uh, right, I might be able to take that bit off. And I say then we'll have a go at cutting up. So because this, this stream, all I really wanted to get done uh, was just this body bit made into like the well not exactly a box but a frame um, and if I did have time I was going to roll out some um, panels but if I can get the box done then I'm happy with that um, yes yeah, so it'd be like a two hour stream which is nice enough for my first one getting back into it plus say I am going to do some more streams this week I think but they may be morning streams um, sort of like nine o'clock ish until 10 11 or whatever 
Um, yeah, so my, my streams, I'm going to try and keep them to like two, three hours. So I mean, that's quite a nice time. Anything longer than that, um, I think my brain starts going a bit funny. Uh, I mean, I, I waffle anyway, but I think I waffle even more when I've uh, <laughs> I've gone two, three hours. Uh, oh, have I missed? Oh, Liv's famous, is she? Yeah, she loves it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I keep saying to my kids, they need to have their own YouTube channels, especially Liv, um, making stuff, say slime. She loves making slime. Um, so, yeah, she, she needs to have her own channel making slime and making, well, whatever now. But, um, yeah. Uh, oh, your dad's the best. Oh, you're too kind. Is that because I'm just giving you pocket money? Um, yeah. Uh, second, just after Bob Ross. Uh, yes, I, I love Bob Ross. Happy little accidents. That's what I like. Oh, this, is, this one's a bit more... Oh, yeah, this one's a bit more glue to the paper. I stabbed myself there. Um, box, box. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does cost a lot of money to send stuff. Um... But yeah, say so just Warhammer stuff. Because I did get a lot of Gundam stuff before. Um, but I never made anything from it. Obviously, I quite like the Gundam stuff because obviously it's round, which is quite cool. Um, but say, for the Sprue builds, they will be Warhammer builds apart from the D&D &D ones. Obviously, because they'll be the D&D &D ones. Yeah, this one's definitely going to ruin the paperwork. So I may well print out another one of these sheets just because it's a nice reference size. Plus, I was going to make... Um, i say for anyone who wasn't here earlier, this sort of thing here, I'm going to make it out of plasticine and then I'm going to make a mould of that and then I'm going to cast the mould with the sprue goo. So that's why there's, there's a few bits on here, some of these guns. Um, I'm probably going to make them out of something else first. Probably plasticine, just because it's easier. Uh, and then make a mould of it and then cast with sprue goo. Um, so that's why having this as a reference picture is really good. So I may well print out another one of these. Um, obviously I've got this one saved on my screen or my computer. Oh, pardon me. So it's going to be the same size and that just makes things a whole lot easier. Um, but yeah, so I, so I can print out a couple of the, the same size ones. Let's put that over there. Nearly off. Just this corner that's uh, well and truly stuck to the paper. Right, well, that's seen better days. It's now turned into the ship that the orcs would have uh, taken over and just bodged it. Well, they'd probably just leave it with the holes in, to be honest. Goes faster. But yeah, so I'm going to print another one of these off just because I want to get that bit done. Um, and even with this little area this guy's sitting. I may well be making that and some of this engine. Yes, yeah, so there's a few bits I'm going to make, make moulds, and then just cast, cast bits in. Right, so there's my two bits. Yeah, apologies for knocking the camera. Obviously, it is kind of like right in front of me. Right, so oh, I probably should have made these the opposite way round. Just because obviously on these sprues, as you know, obviously having sprues. One side is a bit wider than the other. Um, again, doesn't make too many odds because it's going to have panels over it, and then any gaps where the panels kind of like meet uh, will get sprue goo put in them. So yeah, it's all going to look neat and tidy afterwards. Uh, but yeah, having this reverse probably would have been a bit better. <clears throat> so yeah, so again, I've not seen any reference pictures for the width of this. All I know is it's about three quarters, maybe four fifths of that height is how deep it is um so again that's why that's why i keep doing that because when i was watching squidmar earlier in my head that seemed to be the size or the width of the main 
the main body. But uh, yeah. I remind you of Bob Ross. It's the hair. It's got to be the hair. We are very similar. Um, yeah, side by side photographs. It's difficult to tell who's who sometimes. What's my opinion on fish people? Mm. Smelly? I don't know. I can't say I've really ever thought about fish people. Obviously, I love your name, Squizzum. Squizzum Wizard is a awesome name. Um, but yeah, fish people. Who knows? Right. So let's get my little <laughs> my, my little measuring tool out. <laughs> what, how big's that? It's about that big. Well, there we go. We'll uh, we'll give that a go and see how that looks. And if that looks good, then we'll cut loads more up, and that will be our our cross members. So basically, it's going to go like that, like that. Which... Oh, taking into consideration the thickness of this, I reckon we'll take a little bit more off the top. That can go over there, and I reckon that might well be the size. So now if I had all the proper measurements, I would make this spot on. Um, but this does feel very much deja vu with the Tau Manta, where I had, I had well, with the Tau Manta I knew the wing to wing and the tip of the nose or tip of the front to the very tip of the back. Everything else in between was all guesstimated. Um, only because I, I could never find any like, like blueprints or full dimensions. Even looking on Reddit, I can never find anything. So guys, if there's anything you want me to make uh, from Warhammer, by all means let me know what it is you want me to make. But if you can find some detailed drawings of the size of everything and let me know or send it to me, that would be awesome because I do like working to plans. Uh, when I'm scratch building, then no, there's no plans. It's a rough idea, you make it up as you go along. Even with kit bashing, Again, rough idea, make it as you go along. But when I'm doing these kind of builds, I do like to have full on proper dimensions. Um, cause it, just because it makes it easier for me and I know it's gonna come out looking how it, it should look, or how it looks on the tin sort of thing. Um, yeah. I don't think that's gonna be too bad. Cause it, so it's gonna have the panel on it. Yeah, no, we'll go with that. Um, Free gots. Do you need proper measurements? You've got one sitting in the basement. Um, I would have said yes, but now I've started, I'm going to say no, just because I've started. Uh, thanks anyway. Um, yeah. Now I'm say so this isn't going to be a million miles out unless Squidmar has rather stupidly big hands or stupidly small hands. Then this might be far out. So I was watching all I watched all his videos earlier on today, as in the building ones, the painting ones, the giving it away ones. So any video that it was in, I've watched just to see how big it looked in comparison. Because there's one bit where he's got his arm beside it, so it's like I know it's sort of just underneath an arm length. Um, there's a few more where he's got his hands over the certain bits or where he's painting bits. So again, that's why this is eyeballed guesstimated but it's it's a good guesstimate and not a wide sort of picking a number out of a hat sort of thing yes yeah, side and top plans but does it give you dimensions because I've got the um, I've got it on my screen because I've got side plans but again there's different there's different size ones um, Let's have a look. So the one that I've got. Uh, any minute now. Yeah, see I've got... Oh, no. Yeah, so I've got this one. Does it come up on the screen? Can't see now because I've got too many pictures up. Yes, I've got this one. 
Um, but there is another one I, I did. Where's the other one? Oh, disappeared. Um, but I've got another one that shows the cross section, but it shows different ones because there's there's at least three or four varieties of this. There's this one, then there's a Forge World one that came out, which is bigger than this one. Then I think there's another Forge World one, which is a bit different to the first Forge World one. But then I'm sure I've seen somewhere where there's actually there's a fourth one. Um, that's why I'm making mine the 97 one, mainly because it's a bit smaller and if anything, it's a bit less detailed. Um, let's take a look, because this one, this area here, is bigger than than this one. Um, so that's the other point that didn't help, the fact that there are a few different varieties. So that's why I've kind of, well, printed out the one that Squidmar did, because that's the one that I liked the most. Um, so obviously I have got this as well that I'm obviously using as a, as a good reference. Um, but again, his, his hand isn't in this one, but obviously his hand was in uh, a lot of the ones that I was looking at earlier, well, the video I was looking at earlier. Anyway, I'm waffling. There we go. Um, so I think I should put up the funnel measures 19480 long. See, that I saw their measurements somewhere, the 440 by 480. But when I made this one that Squidmar made, when I printed it out to that size, it was it was too big. It looked huge, and it, it would mean that Squidmar has got really, really small hands? Or big hands? Oh, big hands. Yeah, because the, say, this is about, well, it's going to be a lot a lot shorter probably about 60 millimeters shorter than the 440 um, which is why I say I, I I printed this one out rather than making it 440 because it just looked too big compared to the one that Squidmire had so that, that's why yeah that's why it's bizarre but there you go Man of War 665 member of the beast all right buddy how you doing yeah, well, it's been a while since I've done live streams. I am now going to get back into doing them. I've got things set up. I just need to get uh, my Kindle set up so I can read what you guys are saying whilst looking at the camera rather than looking over here to read the screen. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah, good to see you, buddy. I'm going to be doing, yeah, I don't know, one or two streams a week. Because um, basically, whenever I, I build something out of sprues, they're the ones that I'm probably going to be live streaming. Um, but yeah, good to see you here. Yeah, so that's, that's why I say out of all of them, this one kind of looked the nice size, fits on my desk really well, um, and just yeah, this all sort of works works best for me basically. <laughs> right, so yeah, so this is the size that I'm going to do for these bits. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe one in there. About nine of these, I reckon, we need. Um, so we'll get these kind of cut. So this, basically, I'm going to get these cut, then do some filming of me joining this bit up, making the main frame. Um, and I think that's probably where I'm going to end it for tonight. Um, so the other thing I, I was thinking about getting done uh, was making some sprue panels or getting the goo out using my roller to make the sprue panels. And then tomorrow I could probably start putting the sprue panels on. Um, but what's the time now? Half ten. Yeah, I think I'm probably just going to get this framework made, um, and then that will kind of be that will kind of be that really. I think. I've forgotten how many of these I said I need. Let's just cut up quite a few. Yes, I hope you guys are all well, um, all happy, and obviously building, painting, or just chilling. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It won't be nine. There's two, four, six, eight. Oh, there's nine. 
Right, so we'll go with a nine and we'll see how how that goes. Um, yeah, guys, don't forget, hit the, uh, the thumbs up button. Um, yeah, hit the thumbs up button, lovely. And obviously once this video comes out, obviously because once this video is finished, or sorry, the live stream is finished, it turns this into a video, well, it takes a couple of hours, I think. But if you can come back tomorrow and drop a comment on it, that would be awesome too. But I know it's a bit difficult because you've kind of like watched it. So you're not really going to want to come back and watch it again. So, so well, yeah, don't watch it, but just just pop on, leave a comment. Uh, I'm waffling now. So let's have a look. This is going to go the bottom and top. Yep. And then these are all going to go in between. Super smashing great. Or shall I just do them all on this one and then, yeah, that sounds better. I'm just waffling to myself. Again, trying to think of what's the best way to do it. Because the other thing, obviously, you have to think about is when you're making something and you want to video it. So sometimes you make something a bit different to how you would normally, purely because, obviously, you want to film it. Um, so that's why sometimes when people watch my videos, they're probably like, well, why did he make it or do it or build it or why is he holding it like that and the reason i hold certain things in probably weird ways is purely so i can film it um because yeah if i held it how i would normally hold it you probably wouldn't be able to see what i'm doing or you'd see it for a split second then i'd be holding it in a different way so yeah it, yeah you just have to think differently when you're trying to build something and video it and i'm waffling right um, Pipe, are you off? Well, thanks for being here. Um, yeah, I say there's, there's, there's going to be a few more of these streams because it's going to take at least four streams uh, for me to make this, if not more. Uh, which is why I say I'm going to make this this month, but I'm not rushing to make it. It'll be made and finished when it's finished. Um, but when possible, I'm going to try and live stream every part of me building this. But obviously that's why I'm filming it. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's why I'm filming it. So I'm then going to turn it into a video, which will be like the 14 minute length video. Um, just because obviously people will sit through a 14 minute video as opposed to, I don't know, eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours of how long it actually took to build this. Especially when there's a lot of waffling involved. Right, well I have got, -da, I've got my help in hand, which I may use because this is pretty cool, uh, when I start gluing it just to hold one bit up. Uh, but say so for this I'm just going to glue all the bits as it's one half is lying down. And so we'll just get the video all set up. Right, so I'm going to show that I've cut these bits up. And there we go, we're filming, so I can just say, yeah, I've cut all these bits up as cross members. We'll get that in, and then we'll start putting these in. So this is obviously why when I do come to edit these videos, um, I do kind of like speed them up a bit just because obviously otherwise it'd be pretty boring. What we will do is we'll stop the camera recording. There we go. 
Oh, it looks like I'm one, one short. Oh no, there's one over there. That's handy. Yeah, I should have put the greaseproof paper down. Um, yeah, just because obviously the greaseproof paper is pretty cool because nothing sort of sticks to it, which is kind of what it's for. If only my fingers were like greaseproof paper and didn't get stuck to. Yeah, so the next streams will be a bit more, well, entertaining to watch anyway. Um, just because obviously there'll be more of this built and slapping on the panels. Um, it'll start to sort of start taking shape um, a lot better. Um, and yeah, when I make the, the moulds and say that emblem thing that goes on it, I'll do that as a, um, a live stream as well. Uh, just so you can sort of see that in, in real time. All right, we'll give that... A second or two to dry yeah so say with with this I'm definitely gonna make this emblem out of plasticine uh, make a mold and then cast sprues I might well do the same for that barrel because um, obviously I can make sprue panels and then wrap them round something to get them round um, and that might, might be easier actually rather than doing that I think these smaller guns these smaller guns I might make them out of plasticine then make a mold um, and then cast them sort of there on either side uh, same with these little guns as well I might actually make them and make a mold oh there's a butterfly flying around um, but yeah so it's quite a, it's a nice it's a nice simple well I think fairly simple looking build this one but it looks quite cool um, mainly because obviously it's got quite a lot of guns on it and obviously we all love guns and then the engines the engines are pretty beefy looking and obviously well I'm not gonna do it the right sort of justice um, to painting it but I'd love to be able to paint it so it looks like the things are sort of like super hot um, so what I may have to do is watch Squidmar's video again just see how he's done that but I think he uses like the old um, spray gun which I haven't got um, but even if I did have it, I still wouldn't make it as good as he does, obviously. Um, but yeah, I want to have a go at sort of painting it. Kind of like, well, basically I want to try and copy how he's painted his. Um, just because I like the look of it. Right. How is this? I mean, I might not actually even need the old helping hands because I could probably just plonk this on. Oh, the right way around. Like that. Yeah. Right, we'll give that another little second just because I'm going to move them so I don't want them I want the bottom bit to be well and truly uh, properly glued that's what I was going to do I was going to have a little look at the um, the analytics and again I know I shouldn't look at analytics because it it does affect it does affect me sometimes um, and makes me question why some videos do better than other videos just when sometimes there's no logic and I, I'm very much a logical person uh, but sometimes YouTube's analytics there is no logic, there's no reason, there's no rhyme, there's, it just does things on its own. And I don't know why. But um, I'm going to have a look anyway, even though I shouldn't. Uh, uh, Sapien Underground, cheers for that. Cheers, buddy. Uh, I reckon this sort of stream ain't about excitement. It's the honest, raw process and the banter waffle. That makes it good value cheers well I'm glad you said that because there is a lot of waffle um, and sometimes there is more waffle than actual uh, building um, but so, honestly it's so weird because if you knew me in real life I am I'm not I'm not the biggest of talkers um, especially in crowds which is obviously even weirder saying that when was, obviously there's 63 people watching if I was in a, a crowd of people and they'll say five people I would be super quiet um, and yet when I get on the live stream I, I, I do just tend to waffle and it, it's just bizarre but um, Mr. Zeno hello from France hello um, I sound like a typical introvert things that I, I was uh, yeah when I was at school I was an introvert I was very 
very, 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 very quiet. Um, I have come out of my shell a bit since then. Um, but yeah, live streams are just it's so bizarre and random that I'm, I, I talk and talk. Which is weird. When I first did my first few live streams, I really thought I was going to struggle and not, not, not say anything. Which I think then would make for a bit of a, a dull and boring um, live stream. I might actually flip that over. Um, yeah, I really thought I'd have nothing to say, and then say so started doing the live streams, and it's like I can't <laughs> I can't shut up, or I can't get on with what I'm actually meant to be doing. Right, I'm gonna take the advice of putting it underneath. All right, sorry about bashing the old thingy, um, just because then I can glue it, and it won't be stuck to my desk. Yeah, I tried to keep this this cutting mat as clean as I can. Which is why I've got the other smaller cutting mat <clears throat> that I normally bring out when I'm painting or gluing or using the um, the acetone. Just because you get acetone on this, and it just well, you can see you probably can't quite see, but I'll move the camera. There's a bit here where I've got the acetone on, and it basically it just strips obviously all the paint off and the ink off. Um, so that's why I normally put it on the the smaller mat when I'm doing that. Just because I like this mat to be uh, nice and clean, <clears throat> even though this this isn't obviously a clean job making things. All right, let's. Oh, forty k guy, hello buddy. How are you doing? Right, we'll give that a couple of seconds because if I rush it, it's just going to fall a bit again. Um, and yeah, let's have a quick. Quick nose. Oh, kind of flashed off. Don't have to think I'm not. So, having a quick look at the analytics, just a uh, so I have a nose. So the most people I think we had was 78, which is pretty cool. Because it has been quite a while since I've done any live streams, so I can never gauge if there's going to be anyone watching, <laughs> um, or if it really will be just be me just rambling on uh, to no one. Um, but yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, it's nice. People have been there watching, which is awesome. Right, let's get back to that one and where's the chat box? There we go. Yeah, so definitely I definitely need to get the chat box back over here because it's it's a bit of a pain having to keep looking over there. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna film this bit as well, because obviously again, I like to film more than I, I use. Um, just because if you don't film every bit, when you come to edit it. There'll be like a continuity mistake where you'll go from doing all these bits to then all of a sudden it almost jumps and it's almost built. And it's like, well, okay, we've just gone from it being nowhere near built to now almost being built. So that's why I do film lots and lots of bits. And then when I come to edit it, I go through it all. Um, so I always speed up the clips just because then you get to see more in a shorter time. Um, just because I, I, I like 15 minute videos as being at the top I think some of my videos are 20 minutes but most are between 8 and 14 which is kind of like I always make my videos how I would want to watch them uh, which is why I tend to go for the 10 15 minute videos because that's what what I would watch so that's why I always speed the bits up but that's why when I come to edit it I can watch it and sometimes if there's a bit that's almost like repeating itself or doesn't need to be there then I can just well, just leave that bit out so yeah, it's always worth filming more um, and then leaving it out basically. Right, so we'll have that there and let's have a quick drink because I'm a little bit dry. All right. <clears throat> All right, there we go, that's filming. So I say, yeah, I always do, when I'm videoing, I always do the voiceover bit afterwards 
Um, normally, because whenever I am making something, I'm generally watching something. As in, I'll have, um, well, sometimes it'll be YouTube, or sometimes it'll be Netflix, or Amazon Prime, or even like the old catch-up TV. I'll watch that, so obviously that's why it is just easier for me to film bits and then do all the voiceover in bit afterwards. So yeah, so this stream is going to be like, what, two and a bit hours. <laughs> and this is all I've got, is a uh, bit of a frame. Um, but as I say, if I, if I was making this and I wasn't live streaming, I don't know, what, 20 minutes, if that, to make the frame. But obviously it wouldn't have been half as much fun. Uh, without you guys to chat to. Oh, fingers are getting stuck to each other. Stop filming because enough of that. And if we. Right, there we go. I'm just going to hold this for the next few minutes. Yeah, because the glue I've got, um, it's called Super Glue. But I think, it, I think it does say on it somewhere, it's like a 5 to 20 second super glue. Um, unless it's your skin, and then obviously it's instantaneous. Uh, but it is cheap. Um, I can just about see it, but I'll grab it in a minute. But that bottle um, is about £3, pound, and obviously it's quite a large bottle. But yeah, it doesn't always glue things straight away. And sometimes you can glue something, and for whatever reason, it's almost like it's water. There's no glue in it. Oh, pardon me. Um, so yes, yeah, so sometimes you have to leave something, wipe it, and then obviously apply a bit more glue and hope the second time it is actually going to stick what it's meant to stick. Oh. Bosh. Right. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. It's uh, not too bad an angle. Cool. Um, yeah, so that. <laughs> so yeah, guys, two hours. And I've made the little box that is that shape. Um, I say this bit here, it, it goes at a very small angle inwards, not by much at all, but enough that I didn't want to make it part of that straight away. So that bit I will make just to go on the front. Um, obviously there's a bit of a slope here. Again, this one kind of slopes upwards and inwards. Um, and then underneath, well, there's, there's all kinds of things going on underneath there. I have, oh, I've got, let me together. I have got some other pictures of this one where you can see the underneath. And I say what I might actually do is go through, watch the Squidmar um, videos again, and then take sort of screen grabs um, just to try and get all the different angles. Um, so I've got that other good picture, which obviously is the top. So this picture is quite good because say it does have most of the top and the front, but obviously I will need to see more of the underneath, more of the engine, and yeah, more of what's going on around the back there. Um, but say I know when I watched the video of Squidmar, you pretty much can see the whole of the vehicle from all different angles, but it is just a case of taking some screen grabs, which I might do tomorrow, just so then I've got more reference pictures of. Well, all the other bits and pieces, but um, Dafter Things, hello buddy, I hope you're well. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope you're good and making animations. Oh, I want to see the army guys come back, I love them, the uh, the Brits, the army Brits, I think they're awesome. But, um, got three mods, yeah, all the mods are in the house. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how many mods there are, it's only, can only be about three or four. Um, but yeah, yeah, most of you are here. Uh, the Peter Loving Gal is back. Uh, I wonder where you've been off to then, Peter Loving Gal. What have you been up to? What have you been doing yourself? Um, what have you been lurking in the background, just listening? But um, yeah, good to see and hear you are here. Um, 
yeah, I think I'm near the end, guys. Um, or shall I do a couple of... Um, I'm going to leave it to you. Do you guys want to see me make some um, sprue panels? Because um, I was going to roll some out just so they're kind of ready for tomorrow. So I could actually do that, I suppose. Because um, I think I've got everything here that I need. Uh, 15 more minutes. Okie dokie. We'll do some um, some sprue panels. Yeah, so if you haven't seen how I make sprue panels, it's very simple. Um, right, I'm just going to move some bits off my desk because I, I like to, well, have an uncluttered desk, basically. Right, so let's move a few bits and pieces out of the way and we'll make some sprue panels. So for the sprue panels, it is a case of making them out of the sprue goo, but then you need to leave them, say, a good seven, eight hours for them to harden um, just so you can use them. And so this is where making things out of sprues, it's it's not a quick way of making things. If anything, it's, it's the complete opposite. Making things with sprues does double the time of making anything at least, if not more. Um, but obviously it's good because it's recycling something. Um, and anyway, it's just fun. And I think there's not many people that make, well, I think now there are. I know when I first started making things out of sprues uh, about two years ago, I don't think many people made things from sprues. Um, I think they used to use the sprue goo as a filler, so they'd only make small amounts of it. Um, so I'm, I, again, I wish I remembered what it was. There was one video I saw, um, and it had someone putting sprues in some acetone. Although it wasn't acetone, it was something else. What did they put it in? Um, oh, they put it in um, cement glue. They got like a little jar of the cement glue. They put the sprues in it um, just to obviously melt it and then use it as a filler. And it was watching that that I then found out that you could put it in acetone to do the same thing. Um, and that's when I made my first video using sprue goo. And then, yeah, so and I've seen recent, well, not recently, but over the last year or so, there's, um, yeah, lots of people make stuff with sprue goo. Which is pretty cool. Right, I'm waffling again. Let's get. Um, let's see, I get this in just because I don't want to make a mess of my other desk. <laughs> I know it's, it's kind of sad, really. Um, but yeah, obviously this is this is my messy mat, and as you can see, uh, that's acetone, and it just completely takes off, obviously, the mesh. Although this side is a bit rough, so I think I might actually use the other side which should be yeah yeah that's better nice and clean right that's yeah we'll move that out of the way again i, I like ooh, i like to have room when i'm doing things so yeah to make sprue panels obviously you need sprue goo um i say this is a very dark color it isn't normally like this the acetone but this is because there are green sprues and red sprues and I'm sure there's blue sprues in there and that's why the color has gone well incredibly dark um, so you need that and you need grease proof paper so basically grease proof paper baking baking paper um, obviously you make your cakes and bits and pieces or cookies I love cookies um, you put that on this because obviously it doesn't stick and it's the same with the um, sprue goo. It's like a sprue goo, it really will stick to anything apart from this, which is why obviously this is what I use. So we'll take out a few of these, just because again, I normally make several panels at once because well, you're going to use the panels, so you might as well make them. Uh, if you don't use them straight away, because I used to have a box that I had all my little bits and pieces in. Um, but I know I did throw that away. There wasn't much in there, but there was some panels in there. There were some tubes in there. There's a whole variety of things made from sprue goo in there, but I kind of I threw it because I didn't think, didn't think I was going to make anything with sprues anymore. Um, but obviously I am. Right, I'm just going to have a little bit more of a drink. Um, oh, we've got a problem. Problems resolved. Oh, sorry, small. I didn't even notice... Again, that's why I need to get my chat box near the, um, the camera. 
just so I can see more what's going on. Um, yeah, what have I missed? Have I missed something? Because I, I clearly, well, I clearly have missed something because I wasn't looking. I'm not sure what I've missed. Oh. Um, yeah, so. Sprugu. Gloves. Sometimes I wear them, sometimes I don't. If you're a messy bugger, then wear them. If you're going to get the stuff on you, wear them. Um, obviously, I try not to get stuff on me. <laughs> sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But what I've found is, if I don't wear gloves on a video, I get lots of people saying I'm going to die. Um, but the thing is, though, I am going to die someday. We're all going to die someday. Uh, but some people really seem to think this stuff, just looking at it, it's going to kill you. So don't even, don't even look. Um, so yeah, so rather than getting lots of comments about, oh, that's going to give you cancer, oh, that's going to give you this, you're going to die, oh, blah, blah, blah. Um, I do wear gloves when I'm doing the video in bits. I don't always wear gloves. Uh, when I made the Tal Manta, I wore gloves because mainly I was getting the stuff out. I was using my, the gloves in my hands to smooth it out. And also when I made the Tal Manta, I wore the mask quite a lot. And the reason for that was I had the lid off the jar a lot. Um, so yeah, I'll wear a mask. I mean, I, I've got a well ventilated area. There's a big window behind me. When I say big, the window is about four foot by about three foot wide. It's one of those like cantilever what's it. So it's almost fully open. There's another one just there and I'm in a big room. Uh, so ventilation's fine. And I'm not gonna have the lid off for too long. So that's why I'm not wearing my mask. Um, but I am gonna wear the gloves, just say. So in the video, there's no Karens that come out and go, oh, he's gonna die. But I am gonna die, we're all gonna die. Right, anyway, yeah, because years, say, I, I, I think my first Sprue video was probably about, say, just under two years ago. So when I did start getting comments about how bad it was for you, I started looking it up, obviously, just so I knew exactly what it was. And obviously acetone is a stuff, it's nail polish remover, or it has many uses. One of them is nail polish remover. So women across the land, up and down, are having acetone put on their fingernails, obviously on their skin, and, well, as far as I know, they're not all dying. Um, but one of its main uses is in um, laboratories, because it's an awesome glass, clean, uh, glass cleaner. Um, so obviously in the laboratories, they probably do wear masks and stuff, because they're using lots of the stuff. So yeah, I mean, it's like anything. It's got its bad points. But just by looking at it, getting it on your fingers, you're not going to die. It dries the skin out instantly, but then it evaporates in the air instantly. And anyway, I'm waffling now. You, you go and look it up. If you've got any questions, look it up because I'm just, I'm just waffling. Um, right. So, yes, to make the panels, grease poo paper. You need two of these. Um, a rolling pin. Ooh, one of these. I say, I, I've got the one that's got these um, height adjusters on the side, which is great. Because when I roll, obviously I have it so that it's either side of the, the mat. The mat's about one mil thick. This is about two. So it's, well, this doesn't feel. Hmm. Might have to put the different one on. Because I'm sure there should be a gap under there of about one mil. But it kind of feels like there's no gap. Right, so luckily, with this roller that I brought, it comes with a variety of height adjusters, uh, which is pretty cool. Although these ones, I think they can be too big. They're twos, I think they're threes. Right, we'll have a go with these ones, these green ones. Um, because I say, because I'm rolling it on this, but the, the things over the edge, I've got to take into account how deep this is. Um, so yeah, let's take these off. Have 
we've got another miniature. Oh, well, what's. Have we got another miniature, miniature hobbyist? Uh, oh, yeah, we have. Yes, Josh. All right, buddy. Yeah, so Josh is my son. Um, so, yeah, we do have another miniature hobbyist. Sorry, Josh, I didn't notice you'd, you'd come on and said hi. Oh, yes, I can see your first hi. Yes, so if you want to say hi to Josh, guys, say hi to Josh. Or if you want to call him a, a miniature, miniature hobbyist, by all means do so. Um, yeah, so Josh is my son. Uh, obviously, Liv was on earlier. And then my other daughter, Paige, but she's probably not going to come on and watch just because uh, she's watching other people, watching other things. Um, so, yeah, Josh, Liv, and Paige are my three babies. Although, not really babies. <clears throat> right so there we go so that's going to leave a gap of probably about two mil um so when i make these panels these panels are going to be about two millimeters thick which is fine um yeah that's all i got to say on that one really um so yeah so i'm going to film was I filming making these before? Can't remember. Because I did make some panels yesterday. I uh, can't remember if I filmed myself or not. I'm sure I did. I'm going to film myself anyway, just because I can't remember. It was only yesterday. Um, but hey ho. So, yeah, the camera will get right back up here. Just so we can try and get the hold of the table in. I'm going to move back a little bit. Yeah, so it is just a simple case with the panels. Um, obviously, I've got my magic spoon. Um, obviously, I keep this somewhere so it only gets used for sprue goo, and I don't eat my porridge with it, or no one else, no one else eats their porridge with it. Um, so yeah, so this is just for this. I say the gloves. If I wasn't doing this on camera, I may or may not be wearing these. I generally don't get the sprue goo on my hands because obviously you try not to. Um, but when when this thing's kind of like built and I've got the panels on it then I sort of get the sprue goo and use it as a filler then I typically wear gloves because sometimes I put it on and I use my fingers to kind of like smooth it out once it starts to dry obviously don't touch it straight away because it will stick to this like like anything um, but yeah so gloves again don't always do or say don't do what I say don't do what I do just be, you, you be careful in whatever you do. Uh, yeah, sometimes I waffle, sometimes I can't even talk. I don't have a drink. So I've been going for quite a while. I've been going for like two and a half hours. I just say we're getting, we're getting near my limit now. When I get to about three hours, my brain just just goes. Before we can, cancer, it is cancer spoon. Yeah, it's. Um, although again, I, when I looked up um, about acetone, um, as in and cancer. There's no, an article came up that said there was no related cancer deaths due to acetone. So, unless it's like a big jar of it and it fell on someone's head and killed them that way, I, I don't know. But I was Josh going. Um, what's that, Josh? Liv told me I would have come on. Well, cheers, buddy. I'll see you later, mate. You take care. <laughs> Right, so, right, um, again, just making sure I've got everything to hand, so when I start filming, I can just get in and go. That looks about right. Again, I'm going to start off with the rolling pin, show that it has got height adjusters on it. Yeah, that looks fine. That's fine. Cool. Right, so... Eyes down for a full house and all that. Let's do some recording. Oh. So the first thing I'm going to show is a sprue goo. And then we're going to mention sheets of grease proof paper. Blah -dee, blah -dee, blah, talking about them, the fact it doesn't stick to them. Stick one over there. 
Then we can get the rolling pin in. And we're going to mention about the fact it's got these height adjuster bits at the end. So when I roll, it does that. And then we're going to show my little spoon for no real reason other than it's my spoon. And then it's the case of getting a little dollop out. And like the saying goes, a little dollop will do ya. And if it isn't the saying, maybe it should be. Right. That can be put over there. Spoon can be put over there. So let's say none of the acetone touched me. So I'm gonna live for another day at least. And then it's just a case of rolling pin on. Flatten it out. Like some sort of weird pancake. So why is there a hard bit in there? Oh no, was that the jar that I put the um Ah oh, it is. Would you Adam and Eve it? I've got two jars. Obviously, let's just record, stop the recording. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> I've got two jars. If you saw earlier, I put loads of nibbly knobbly bits in one of the jars. I put it in the jar that I've just used. So in this this bit, there's loads of. Well, you can't see them, but I can feel them. There's uh, thick bits. So. This will be a case of scrap that take and then get ready for take two. So someone did ask, well, not recently, but people have asked, Sprugu, once it's been used, can you reuse it? Um, the main answer is you can. It never seems to be as good as the first time. But because this stuff hasn't set, I don't mean about sticking in my fingers. Um, because this stuff hasn't set and gone hard, then yeah, we can just put it straight back in. But if this stuff had gone hard and gone back to being a plastic, I have used it before, as in re-melted it or re-dissolved it, um, but it's never as good as the first time. But say, because this stuff hasn't hardened, it can go back in. So, all right, let's make sure that that jar gets put away and then this lovely jar here with the good stuff right, we'll put them sheets to one side as well right are we all ready for round two <laughs> because that's what's gonna happen so we'll get them ready got that ready get my spoon ready right here we go take two <laughs> oh pardon me it's very rare this happens but obviously, again, these are the bits you won't see in the video. You won't see me doing that first bit because that first bit will just be deleted. Um, but yeah, there we go. Oh, let's stick to it again. Right, so exactly the same as what I just did. I am going to be showing the good old jar of sprue goo and saying that it's very dark. Not normally that dark. I'm going to say you need one and two bits of grease poo paper just like that and then I'm going to mention a rolling pin and it's got adjustable side bits and then I'm going to show my little magic spoon just because why not right so let's try again and hopefully this sprue goo is obviously going to be lovely and gooey because it's not had bits shoved in afterwards so Again, I'm going to be sad and use my same little joke. A little bit of sprue will do you. Do that. Well, I probably shouldn't have twisted it because now it's all mixed in. Out there. Grease proof paper over the top. And then this time when we roll it out, it's going to be lovely and smooth and not have nibbly, knobbly bits in it. Oh, I think I probably could have put more on there actually. Yeah, I think I've got this, oh, I think I've got a roller now too high. 
but that's fine. There you go, lovely and smooth. Right. So I'm going to make some more, but I'm going to put more in. I mean, what it was because when I did the um, the sprues yesterday, <clears throat> using the other uh, height thingies, obviously I put that amount of sprue goo on the sheet because it was thinner. It obviously went a lot further. Uh, but the problem with these ones is, I think it did make it almost too thin. It was it wasn't even like one millimeter. It was uh, super thin. Um, right, this is where sometimes I wish I had a bigger desk because we're going to put that there. I'm not going to film me doing that again because um, you only need to see it once to sort of obviously know how to do panels. So they're not exactly difficult things to do. And then we shall make another one. Um, what's that? Uh, is that Yaz 14? It's interesting to see the bloopers, so to speak. Yeah, it's like I don't normally. Mm, uh, sometimes, um, yeah, don't normally make sort of mistake mistakes, I, I suppose. Um, again, if I wasn't filming, because sometimes when I'm filming, I do forget about certain things, as in the fact that I just put nibbly knobbly bits in one of these like an hour or so ago. Um, whereas normally, if I was doing this without filming, I would have put the nibbly knobbly bits into one and then put it somewhere sort of further out of sight. Um, cause that's why I've got two of these on the go. I like to have two because then say I was using one and I used all of it. I would then have the other one if I needed to, but then this one I would fill up that night with more ooey gooey, uh, nibbly knobbly bits, um, just so it would be made ready for tomorrow. So say this stuff is really kind of lovely and smooth and gloopy. So this this was put in the jar yesterday, um, yesterday midday-ish, I guess. But say it would have been like this after about eight hours, um, and it, it doesn't get any softer or any gooier the longer you leave it. It really is a case of eight nine hours. It hits whatever consistency it hits, and then that's it. Right, so we'll do a few of these and then I think I'm about done. That's right, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. Saplin, quite correct. Joshua Gunner is back in the house. You right, Josh? So what game are you playing at the moment then, buddy? Is it a bit of GTA or are you Minecrafting? Right, and say it's as simple as rolling it out. This is obviously better. There's a bit more there. So because of the um, the panels on this, the panels are quite small. Um, so yeah, so the the panels I'm rolling out don't need to be huge. But the thing is though, even if it was bigger, you could just cut these into nice squares and sort of butt them up towards each other. Oh, pardon me. Um, so yeah, but yeah, so nice and easy does it. Roll them out, nice and flat. And obviously, that's why I like these rollers with these um, height things on, because then you know when you get the panel, it's going to be the same thickness all the way through. Uh, when I first used to make these panels, I had just like a, a bog standard roller. And the problem there is sometimes when you roll it out, you'll get thinner areas and thicker areas if you have like the roller at an angle, um, which didn't matter too much, but it was a bit of a, a niggly pain. So yeah, so that's why I purposely went and got a roller with a uh, the height bits, just because then you know every panel you get, it's going to be the same height, which is really good. Um, again, this is what I could do with more room. On my desk well, I think we're gonna make one more and then that will be that will be the lot so yeah guys any questions at all by all means ask now um, I'll try and answer unless you're gonna ask when's my next stream because then I'm not sure 
Um, so it may well be tomorrow. Um, yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, guys, so if you, I know I've asked a few times, but if anyone's turned up now that wasn't watching earlier, if you do have any sprues and you're happy to send them and then post them to me, um, yeah, I'd love them. Um, because I, I think the sprues I've got, I probably haven't got enough to finish this off. But say, this project's gonna take the next couple of weeks anyway, so there's no immediate rush. But if you have got sprues you don't want and you'd like to donate them to me for a worthy cause, um, I would much appreciate it. And I say what I would do is if you want me to and you're happy with it, I can mention you in the video um, just to say that you've obviously contributed uh, to help make whatever it was I make. Well, in this case, obviously the Thunderhawk. So I, I picked, a couple of people have messaged me earlier on today um, and they're sending them. Uh, but I know they are from America. So obviously it's going to take a little while for them to come here. So if you're in the UK or Europe, obviously it'd be lovely if you could send them, because obviously then they'd be here well, within the next week or so. But yes, yeah, so at the moment it would just be Warhammer sprues, um, not Gundam sprues. Um, Possibly WizKid sprues, because I am going to use, say the WizKid sprues I'm going to use to make D&D &D stuff, just because obviously they're D&D &D sprues. Um, but yeah, with Warhammer builds, I want to keep it to just Warhammer stuff. Uh, ever read 2000 AD? I did, yes, from number one. Yes, I would say I probably read it from number one. Um, haven't read it for 20 years, 30 years, I'm not too sure. But yeah, as a kid, I loved 2000 AD. Um, yeah, obviously Judge Dredd, favourite. Uh, I like the ABC Warriors. Um, yeah, I think I liked them. I liked Sloan. Um, who's the blue guy? Like the GI guy. I liked him. But yeah, I like the ABC Warriors. I liked, I liked them. But obviously, I didn't like the the first. The first um, Judge Dredd film with old Sylvester Stallone in didn't like that because obviously he took his helmet off. It's like the one thing about Judge Dredd, you never see his face. And what they do in it, they show his face. But that's why I did enjoy the um, the other uh, Judge Dredd film, uh, which was a bit more gritty, a bit more, a bit more like Judge Dredd. Um, I enjoyed that film. All right. And there we go. So there's a few panels. So yeah, obviously it is a case of obviously the more panels you need, the more these you have to roll out. Um, so again, these if I was doing it during the day, these would take seven eight hours before I would do anything with them. What I normally do, roll them out like I've done now. If it was during the day, in about three four hours, I would peel off the top layer, uh, top layer of um, grease with paper. Mainly because obviously this stuff it needs air for the acetone to obviously evaporate in. So when it's in this, it'll stay softer for longer because obviously air is not getting to it. So after about three four hours, I'd peel off the top one because it'd come off nice and clean, and then leave it, and then I'd leave it to the seven eight hours, and then I'd, I can do what you want with it. But the other good thing with this stuff is, say you wanted it to be round, um, but as in like parts of the uh, the engine that are obviously round and obviously the gun that's there you can get this stuff and you can wrap it well obviously not quite that that's quite big but whatever size you need it wrap this around it and then put some masking tape around it to sort of keep it in that shape then wait the seven eight hours and you take this off and it will have dried in that circular shape so that's why I say sprugu is really good because it can be used in quite a quite versatile sort of way so you can make tubes out of panels really really well because obviously it's a nice consistent um, thickness and so you wrap it around something put a bit of tape around it to sort of keep it wrapped around it and then once it's hardened you can take it out cut it and yeah so that's, that's what we're doing for parts of this the engine it will be a case of making a panel wrapping it around something which is the right size um, I think I have got some tubes that probably are about that size um, so yeah it's, it's good stuff right 
Um, can't see any questions, which is cool. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, I am going to be doing more. Um, the chances are the streams will probably more than likely be of sprue builds, um, just because it's easier to do these kind of kind of um, live streams, really. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. I haven't got much more to say other than <laughs> I end up just waffling. I'm going to take these off because these do make your hands kind of sweat a bit. Ugh. Cool, yeah, look at this. Thank them. Right, yeah, guys, thanks so much for, for joining me. Um, I say the, the next one will be a bit more exciting when I start putting panels onto the framework and making more frameworks. And I say I'm looking forward to making that out of um, plasticine and then making a mould of that casting it in Sprugu, so that'll look quite cool. Um, I will do something similar for these guns. Um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to uh, to making the rest of this. So it's a nice, it's a nice shape. It's not too complicated. It's going to look pretty cool, um, and it'll fit on my desk a whole lot better than that towel manta ever did, because that just overspilled everywhere. Um, but yeah, uh, have I heard of Rylanor's last stand. No. No, I've not. No, I haven't got a clue. No. Uh, Smoyan, very much enjoyed the stream. It's amazing to be back. No, cheers for, for being here, buddy. Yeah, I've, I've kind of missed all you guys. Um, especially as obviously it's a lot of familiar sort of, sort of names up there. 40k guy, Chaotic. Um, yeah, and Josh Gunner. Obviously, there's a familiar name. <laughs> Uh, oh, man, Arega, you, you just turned up. Oh, fireworks show. Oh, awesome. I'm literally, literally just finishing, I'm afraid, Mana. Um, hope you enjoyed the fireworks, though. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, guys, I'm going to finish off. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Cause it makes a big difference to everything. Um, if you can share this video, Please do so. I don't know where you'd share it, but if you can share it anywhere, then I appreciate that as well. Um, any sprues, if you can message me at miniaturehobbyist at gmail.com. There should be a link in the description with my email anyway. Um, yeah, I'd very much love to have your sprues and turn them into something. Okay, I'm going to have a go at trying to push a few buttons to see if I can sort of gracefully leave um, this thing. Right, so I've only really got a live stream starting soon. So I need to get another one which says bye. Um, but yeah. Now, cheers, guys. Really appreciate it. You all take care. Love you all. And I'll see you.